Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode is 475. We're going to be talking about some Worlds tournament news as well as a lot of really cool things that WizKids has been showing off on their Facebook page for upcoming Iconics and Wheels of Vengeance and Notorious, as well as answer some listener questions. This is episode 475. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. Again? How many people even play this game? Like, 100 pieces of dead and human. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people oh, think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. So they're going to be able to edit that out, for sure. That's cool, because it makes sense. I'm going to make your clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're getting Hero Clicks on the WizKids website, the shop.wizkids.com website, you can use code DIAL H10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order, not available with Iconics and Play at Home kits. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, yeah. It's been a busy, busy week. It's been a wild week in the Hero Clicks world. Yeah, we thought Scott Porter's unboxing was going to be the craziest thing that happened for a while, but no, no, no. 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 Uh-huh. Pretty, co- <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? Actually, quite a few things made me happy this week. We'll start off with uh, the thing that happened most recently. This morning, I went to mow my lawn. It's been a few days, uh-huh. and uh, the carb on my mower cracked, so oh. oil started spilling everywhere. I did not understand what was happening. I thought it was low on oil, so I put more oil in it, because this was before I saw that oil was filling everywhere, uh, oh. and rather than trying to fix it, I decided that like this mower's 10 years old at this point. I kind of like a new mower, so I went and got a new mower. First test drive... Not super impressed with it. I went with uh, an electric, like, battery-powered one. It, the battery just kept overheating, so I got through about half my yard. And to be fair, my yard's way overgrown, so that's part of it. Oh, okay. And I did have it on, like, way too low of a setting just because I, I refused to, like, go over it and then go back over it. I'm like, I, you will cut this grass at the lowest <laughs> setting that I want you to cut it at. <laughs> uh, but, no, it, it's cool. It's working. Got about half the yard mode today, so I'll finish up tomorrow. But that, that was exciting. Yard. And then the thing that made me the most happy, because that was only tangentially happy, uh, this Mike dude on Facebook dropped some killer custom figures last night. Uh, some Stargate SG-1. So he's got... Oh. Call, are you are you a fan of SG One Calder? Do you ever I, watch Stargate? No, I've never watched. I've never watched this. Oh thing. man, I watched. There was one Stargate movie I did watch where it was like the Stargate is out here in the middle of the desert and yeah. some things happen. That's like the one. That's where what I've seen. Before they replace all the actors with oh okay similar looking people. Uh, no, there's like some people got like a pretty decent start on that show and then um, okay, I actually. Gosh, I can't remember. Isn't it like Jason Momoa or somebody was on that show? Jason Momoa was in season was... two of Atlantis. Is... Okay. Oh, so okay. Atlantis was after SG-1, but yeah, it was like the, the next big thing that they did. Um, gotcha. The dude, I can't, Christopher Judge, I think, the dude that voices uh, God of War, uh, Kratos. Oh, okay. He, yeah, cool. He plays Teal'c in... Uh, SG one. He was like the the Jaffa guard, like one of the head alien dudes for the bad guy in like season one that they for some reason turned to like their side. I don't know how, but but then he sticks with them like the whole rest of the way. Uh but no, it was just a really cool like looking at his flavor text, looking at like the abilities he gave him, the dials. Surprisingly like good dials for like we've gone over some uh some thread dead Dial yeah, we've design done stuff. Reviews of this is actually pretty good design stuff. dials. Maybe a oh, little nice. overcosted, uh, but like overall, I can't really like blame. I I like all these dials, and I really like the team ability he gave them. And uh, oh. so it's, I don't know what the name of the team. It's probably just like SG One or something would be the name of the team ability. But it's how many gods have we killed? Opposing characters with the cosmic deity or ruler keyword can't use protected outwit or safeguard outwit, or willpower. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Just 
it would have to be i think if this was in the game it would have to be cleaned up a little bit it'd have to be like within yeah like four squares or something it can't can't just be like map wide no one can use willpower on the opposing team but uh i really like it i think it's a a really cool team ability it actually makes a lot of sense because like the whole thing that like sg1 does is like take down these like deity dudes Oh, sure. And yeah, all deities, whatever, have the cosmic energy team ability, so it makes sense. Gets rid of their willpower. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I like it. I think it's it was really fun. It was cool. I, I chatted with him a little bit about uh, making like some enemies, some like replicators and different stuff like that. It was fun just reminiscing about a simpler time when I would binge watch SG-1 all the way through. Ah, the good old days yeah only uh let's see it's 23 13 years ago was the last time that i stayed up for like 24 hours watching just sg1 i think you gotta do it again simian you uh, gotta run it back i can you gotta stay up for 24 hours straight i will die <laughs> oh, no. like like dr Jan- daniel jackson i will die and then come back three episodes later can we can we add that to the intro music? The oh, I can't stay up for twenty four hours. I'll die. <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> we'll slip it in somewhere. Oh boy. Oh gosh. That's a great, that's a great sound bite. Well, right on. I love. I can't believe I didn't see these. Were these in like players and collectors around the world? International exchange. I must uh, have missed them. It would have been HeroClex. Yeah, players and collectors around the world. I'm okay. pretty sure. Well, nice, cool. Yeah, I totally missed those. Yeah, Dope. I would completely dox him but i don't want to say his last name because i'm pretty sure it's a pretty unique last name but uh oh, yeah. sure <laughs> dude sure. named mike sg1 i well, i put a bid on him for 200 dollars, but it seems like he's not oh, gonna dang, sell you're, him, you're so. gonna... oh oh okay they're not yeah. for sale i well, guess not you gotta throw it out there right i was you going for like my like everything has a price and he was just like haha if you want, you can get your own. And he sent me like the links to like the Etsy page where he got like the miniatures <laughs> and stuff. And I was like, ah, ah, uh, no, I don't want of... to do that. <laughs> I just want to buy the ones you made. <laughs> I want yours though. Gosh, that's funny. Uh, but all right. Uh, what made me happy this week? Ocon is happening this weekend here, not in Omaha, Nebraska. No, no, no. Why would a, a convention called Ocon happen in Omaha? No, just like its predecessor, Nebcon, a convention that is named after Nebraska, this convention is, of course, in Iowa at Council Bluffs, the Mid America Center. So I spent the last couple of days hanging out there. I was pretty happy. I was able to finish up the uh willie's wonderland nicholas cage costume cut up the shirt and like do his like gut duct tape gut wrap thing he does after he gets beat up a little bit um and then yeah add some blood to the shirt and get the shirt all cut up as if willie had like scratched it already and everything so it's pretty cool so i got that costume done i got about you know, I think three or four people recognized who I actually was. One guy just said, really? Of all things? And I was like, well, that's kind of a judgy thing to say at a convention yeah. of all I've places, seen some, I've seen some I think real weirder, niche characters at yeah. conventions. So. I think there's nicher, sir. This movie's only two years old. Yeah. Like, come on. Also, uh, like, but, that yeah. is the main character in the movie. So yeah. it's not like... <laughs> that's, not like I've seen characters, like people dressed as characters that were like split second background character in like some TV oh, show. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on. Or like a fan art version oh, of something. Oh, it's like, dude, that too. How is that um, not the most niche? You have to be exactly. online to see fan art. Yeah. Even I would, I would say if any of my cosplays are niche, it's the ultimate lawyer, which is literally a throwaway oh, yeah. gag, like whatever, you know. But um, so, yeah, so I, got, I was able to be him. And my little brother, he he cosplays uh, the batter from Off, which is this like old school RPG type game like thing. Uh, I was like independently made and all that jazz. And he got like he's a baseball player. He's the batter. So he keeps getting mistaken for being like uh, one of the uh, baseball furies from the Warriors, which is so funny. Um, It's like that's always a blast. And then the next day I was John Walker cap at this convention more than any other I had people go, you know, not my Captain America or something else where it's like, oh, hey, what's up, U.S. agent? And I'm like, well, actually, 
when I'm in blue, I am Captain America. I'm I'm your Captain America. And it just but I got a ton of call outs this time. And I was like, well, you see the government. Probably my favorite thing was he was like, you're not my Captain America. Well, actually, the government says that I am. This shield is funded by you, the taxpayer. So thank you. And he says, who says I pay taxes? And I was like, well, that, that that's a whole whole different can of worms. <laughs> it's pretty. It was pretty funny though. Pretty. Then you chased him down and split his head. And open then I and then shield. I chased him down and split his head open because he wasn't attacked. You're a anger. criminal. How dare he <laughs> mess him up? I was like Carnage during Axis, where it's like, well, they're evil, right? Got to kill them. And it's like, no, Carnage, just calm down. You know, I was like, I'm. Just, yeah. No, like that was fun, uh, being John and all that stuff. That would have made and, you like uh, a true Elliot up, Ness. Hanging out. A real yeah. a real Ness would a real, go a real after Ness. somebody that uh avoided taxes. That's right. Mm. I'm an unstoppable. Right? Ooh, That's the movie yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, and then also there was this one cosplayer who was like a uh, a casual Gwenpool. And I was like, are you by chance? Like, it was like, okay, she had katanas on her, like, back. And then she had, like, pink shoes on. And then she had, like, a pink jacket tied around her waist. But it, it looked like it was a Gwenpool jacket, but it was hard to, like, kind of tell. And I was like, are you, like, are you Gwenpool? And she's like, oh, my gosh, yes. And so, like, we nerded out about, like, the probably one of the best comic runs or more fun independent comic runs that Marvel made was like that original Gwenpool run. It was so, so enjoyable from her first three appearances, like Howard the Duck, then to her own run was just made her such a great character. So we just like nerded out uh, about Gwenpool for a little bit, which is always great. She's one of my favorite characters that Marvel's like one of my favorite new Marvel characters they've introduced. So like that was absolutely a blast, but the convention was just a ton of fun. May go Sunday. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but uh, it was just, it was a good time. Nice. Yeah. I saw some flyers and like posts for it uh, online and stuff, and uh, we just we're we're pretty busy for like the next two months. <laughs> yeah, this was I felt a little guilty while I was there. I'm like, ah, I really should be. We should really be doing some hero books stuff. Well, really should be. I mean, I also like I'm so I'm traveling. Uh, it'll be the depending on like when we come back from Gen Con, I will immediately yeah. be back on the road. Oh, driving dang. out of state for um to like stay in dubuque iowa oh, okay. uh, for my work for a while i'm not gonna lie part of me was hoping you would say i have to drive back to indiana to go get another <laughs> license and i was like no simeon with the double indiana trips again oh, gosh it, i mean it was yeah the one year it went to kokomo and then went to evansville or evansville then kokomo i don't remember which way it was but was wild. yeah and then Gosh, and then after like the weekend right before Worlds, I'll be driving into Western Nebraska for a wedding, and then we're like taking off like Tuesday that Tuesday for Worlds. And world. also, yeah. I don't think we've said this on the podcast before because we said it on a live stream, but we'll be covering Worlds again this year. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, really uh, <laughs> we forgot to mention this to uh, our broader it's audience that wasn't in the live stream, but yeah, uh, your boys are going to be back. In Memphis, covering worlds, doing the on the ground stuff, updating Asking you. the hard hitting questions. Yeah, <laughs> keeping We're you trying to do a lot more problems. live streaming this year, but we yeah. don't have complete we... clarification that we'll be able to. So, right, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. But all the same stuff you guys got last year, the fun Facebook live videos where either we live streamed the finals game on Facebook, and we also live streamed some like fun little giving away. Uh, legacy cards and stuff and going around the convention and giving you an idea of what's happening also will be the first you know channel facebook page whatever to be posting build sheets to be posting tournament standings between rounds uh we'll have cool daily vlog videos of like this is day one all the stuff that happened day one some player interviews all all that same stuff we did last year and like so much more is going to be happening this year at worlds i am i am really excited there's never been a better time to be a listener slash follower slash subscriber of Dial H for Hero Clicks uh, than this year because we're going to have some of the best world's coverage. Well, the best world's coverage because the best world's coverage was last year when we did it, and this will be uh, the new best world's coverage this year when we do it. And hopefully, it just keep getting better every single year because we're excited. We know a lot of people aren't able to make it, you know, just you can't or blah, 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 or you want to keep up or it's tough traveling and all that stuff and we want to make sure you guys know what's happening here and then yeah. same thing for the people that are there we want to give them 
uh, something fun to watch on their way back home where it's like, oh, I might be in this video or, oh, man, I love that. Like, I have great memories of being there and all that stuff. It's so cool. There's like a, a day one video going over the tournaments and all this stuff. And, oh, there's me in the background. There's my friend or something. You know, it's just it's it's fun to have everything documented because – you know, what do you do when you take a trip? You take pictures. Or when you get back from the trip, you're like, ah, oh, dang, I should have taken more pictures and videos or something to remember my trip. And we'll be doing that for you. So check it out. Stay tuned. We're excited to uh, provide you a bunch of Worlds coverage. It is going to be a blast. And we're so thankful for these kids again to give us this opportunity to cover Worlds in this official capacity. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. I'm so stoked. You guys have no idea what we're cooking up. And it's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be so cool. Yeah. So, yeah. If you guys do happen to be in at Worlds, make sure you stop by our little booth, say hi. Yeah. Uh, try and find Edison Lee and Andrea and say hi to them. Our, our two IPF winners, they're going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun seeing them, hopefully going out for dinner. And then hopefully they have a lot of fun just playing games because we won't be able to interact with them the whole weekend because they'll be busy being HeroClix players. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah, so yeah, if you are going to World, absolutely feel free to stop by the booth. If you got any Dial H merch, make sure you're you're rocking your tokens, your t-shirts, whatnot. If you're on our Patreon and you support us and you've gotten all those things. We we want to try to do another t-shirt design this year. We had the awesome like chainsaw chip designs last year that we were able to give to certain people at Worlds and before Worlds to rock. So we'll have to think of something. But if you have an idea for like a, a Dial H referency t-shirt design, like the chainsaw chip thing was like purely from our our live stream with the double chainsaws for chip. It's like, you know, it is hilarious. Um, and like, that's really what inspired it. So if you guys can, you know, feel free to email, send in, you know, a Facebook message, a tweet, whatever towards us for a cool t-shirt design. We'll probably be able to get it like a bunch made, especially if you, if you want one, and you don't support us on Patreon. Uh, feel free to message us too about getting a t-shirt. But if you can think of some cool t-shirt designs, I, I had pitched like a U.S. agent shirt design, and then we all had a few other ones that maybe I I won't get into. But there's some really cool ones based on some of our videos, like maybe a new school Extreme Rules t-shirt design or a Masters of Simeon's Multiversal Masters of Bruce shirt design I think would be really Mm. fun. Um, (laughs) And we may, I don't know, we may put it up to a vote. I have no idea, but if you guys have ideas for shirt designs, please send them in because we'll totally hear you out. We're trying to figure it out, but yeah, Worlds is going to be really cool, and we're we're just so excited to provide coverage for you. So please stop by, say hi, let us know if you have like a favorite video, blah 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 blah, you know, and just chat with us. We we love to talk with people that you know listen, people that watch the YouTube, all that stuff. It's always it's always a blast to hear like, oh, I really like so and so video, or like, hey man. How'd you do this for that video? And it's like, oh well, actually, let me let me tell you. You know, it's like it's it's always a ton of fun. You know, and I love it when people are like, oh, I listen to the podcast of my son or something. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Seeking out Dexter to get some deep, deep dial H lore that he remembers because man, he that was, was whipping out stuff that I forgot about completely. He, yeah, I was like, I, whoa, you listen almost as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Dexter hit us with some crazy deep dial H lore that I was like, I don't think many people remember that, man. Wow. I barely it remembered so some cool. of it. And I was oh, like, yeah. I listened to that episode like twice. <laughs> at least. <laughs> it was so that was like definitely a highlight of last year. That was so cool. Oh my gosh. But all right, let's go ahead. Let's a lot of stuff happened in Hero Clicks this week. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So Whiskey's been really awesome on Facebook. Like, I know there's obviously the big looming elephant in the room, and we'll get to that in a second. But I just kind of want to say I love these dialed in. I love the, ooh, here's a part of a sculpt. Um, I didn't know Namor's hair was that gray. I'll be honest. I didn't know. (laughs) I I saw that, and I put in a joke guess, obviously. Um, Oh, I mean, you saw my guess. But I didn't read the part where it said Wheels for Vengeance or Wheels of Vengeance. So I was like, oh, that's obviously Rachel Ghoul. I just like saw oh, like sure. the hair and I was it like, did. yeah, that's like, yeah, that's what I thought too. The eyebrow uh, and like the, the white Ghoul. hair. That's obviously Rachel Ghoul. Uh, and then I was reading the comments and everyone was like, who who could this be? I have no idea. And I was like, is everyone just like joking? Because like, it seems pretty obvious to me. And then right. they 
they showed the actual picture later. The and I was like, that, oh, uh, I wasn't even close. I was in the wrong say, universe. Yeah, dude. I thought it was Rachel Ghoul too. But then I was like, oh, no, it does say wheels. Never mind. Yeah, so, I didn't get that far. I got um, to. I'm uh, just going through. I'm counting these. One, two, three. Let's see. Four. Uh, let's see. I think I only see four. But the fact that four people said Dracula, and you'll, you'll remain nameless, just shows that you're really not the biggest Dracula fans because we already saw Dracula. <laughs> Full head of white we, hair, yeah. by the way. Yeah, he's so got the the fear itself look where it's long white that. hair, blood armor, ponytail, blood blood armor. Yeah. So, oh, a wave of inspiration that might have been the 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 giveaway, like how they had to take a bite out of this one right. for King Shark, and this was a wave of inspiration. But man, I didn't think Namor was that gray. We also couldn't see his funny little elf ears, so that was tough too. Yeah, this definitely um, looks like. Uh, so we get like the actual sculpt, which. Um, dude, yesterday, this yeah, cool. yesterday they dropped the sculpt. Huge yes. shark bursting out of the water with like a massive. It, this looks like one of their D and D, which could just be like one of their D and D sculpts reused because they did make like some sharks for their D and D line of miniatures. But like the level of detail with like the shark, like what I call like great white acne, like how they've got like that weird freckly face like nasty kind of like yeah i don't know dude, that their teeth just speckle. like jam through their gums and it looks yeah. painful and gross at the same time but the shark looks like all of that and then yeah we've got like ye oldy time namor not like ye oldy time invaders namor but like he's old so this is from some sort of future storyline i read one a I, while back where like most thing, of the yeah. world uh, like was flooded and so Namor was just like king of the world now because it was like 98% water instead of 70% water or whatever and I don't know if that's what this is from I don't remember him flying around on a shark but mm. could have been so okay. I don't know so yeah so like that was really cool they did they man when they did clicks bait I was like don't don't use don't say that I know words. I saw that, that and I was like, "Oh, name. <laughs> that dude who has the uh, the rights to the word clicks is coming after you." I know, a little scary, a little scary. Um, but like, yeah, is it Orca, Jeff the Land Shark, Tiger Shark? Dude, was this was this said yet? Either they haven't uh, they Are haven't they? come back to this. This was posted it's... before they showed Namor, so okay. I don't know if this was just like a bait and Overall, switch. Overall, it seems like everybody wants Jeff. I honestly. I don't want Tiger Shark. I don't know. People saying Tiger Shark. I'm like, why? I know we haven't gotten him since like Incredible Hulk or whatever. Yeah. Or maybe it was like Spider Man or something. But like, Tiger like, Shark man. is a. Let's get Orca. Cool Let's get Orca. 80s, 90s villain. Orca. I think anyone that says Orca is saying it because Marvel Snap. Marvel Snap. You no one, no one knows never, who Orca I is. I never knew him before yeah. either. But like, he's a big old Orca man with. Uh, it is a cool. Whatever. I mean, yeah. It's like. It's like any other animal-based person, but it's an animal that could, I don't know, kill most other animals that find themselves I mean, in the yeah, ocean. Yeah, like the orca, the killer whale is like, yeah. So, you know, pretty neat. They also did a, look. we're not going to get into the local spotlight, but this is really cool, where they looked at some, like, pulp events that happened and, like, talked about the yeah. placing and all this stuff. Like, that's it also was really, really cool. well written, too. I am... I'm loving the amount of stuff. And also, of course, they have the uh, Creative Construction, <laughs> the Dial H article series. Uh, that yeah. is some of my favorite teams, by the way. I love that Herald uh, Chainsaw team. I really liked the... Uh, so one of us had like the Mystics team. No, it was Robots. And then it was... Yeah, it was. You had the Mystics team. Yeah. I was like, dang, that's wild. You it know, wasn't, like, so oh, not a my, realistic damage. Mystics not team. True not true like, Mystics. Yeah. yeah, but it was like, a, you're taking a bunch of damage yeah. here. Oof. I made I made a joke. I said mystics were made. <laughs> yeah, mystics. Were made. And it's like, a double right. layer pun because it's mistakes were made, but also uh, strife gives everyone mystics. So mystics were also made. Yeah, yeah, double layer. You know, I I liked it. I I enjoyed our article series. I'm enjoying our article series. I hope you guys are enjoying our article series. We are like, I don't think I've ever built so many teams in. <laughs> <laughs> like this oh, span of time i don't from like so worrying about like states to also doing the article series to also like you know i built a team for last week uh didn't play last week locally but i was like yeah, i built a team um which was still the pulp team that i already made but uh, maybe it counts <laughs> uh and then they also showed off this is wild um this blew my mind the kong iconics yeah. 
So old fi- like black and white film reel counting yeah. down. This winter, to... Colossal Kong, a hero yeah. clicks. It's like hero clicks little... iconics presented by WizKids, Colossal Kong, and that's all they say about it. I know, uh, but it's like we're getting Kong. Like, is he the in Kong, the, the King Kong? The I, I imagine the public domain or whatever. That's what I was thinking. I was because so, somebody asked yeah. somewhere. Um, now that we're getting Kong, like, what's some other things that we could get? And I was thinking about that, and I was like, I do wonder at this point how many things are going to fall into public domain, or like you know, that it's going to lapse so, so that the IP is just I, like up for I grabs. I want to say in two years, the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey Mouse is going to be public domain. Oh man! So so nothing, and as we know, nothing's super good. <laughs> For a so, while, yeah. <laughs> not, I thought it, we were like not, further along than Steamboat Willie. Jeez, no, no, yeah. So because they every time Mickey had like changed or whatever, they got a new patent or whatever. It's I don't know what it is. I guess but they they got a new re up on their copyright or blah 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 for it. So we are like twenty thirty something before we get a Mickey Mouse who can talk, that tracks, um, yeah. which is which is like public. But if you want one that whistles. <laughs> You can you can do him in like two years, I think. Um, is Wizard of Oz public domain? Like people have used Wizard of Oz in so much stuff, right? Well, the book's gotta be the book. Okay, so, so the like book is, that's where I'm because that's where get. I was at. I was like, you could take like there's a ton of stories. Pretty much anything you get for free as like an EPUB that you don't pirate that you can like go to a website and get for free. Uh, EPUB is for um, eBooks. It's like the the file for ebook so anything that you could get for an ebook for free like classical stories dickens moby dick that kind of stuff as far as i know Ooh. is all like super old enough to be yeah, public dick. domain now so yeah we could get you're even a <laughs> harpoon <laughs> a harpoon man and his uh his great white whale what's his name it's captain something captain nemo is the diff- other Ahab. famous Ahab, there yeah. we go. We get Captain Ahab with a big old harpoon, harpoon gun. Captain I mean, Ahab, Moby Dick box set. Um, <laughs> uh, Winnie the Pooh, right? Because of uh, oh, all the yeah. stuff about like blood and honey or whatever. Like Winnie the Pooh is in like non red shirt Winnie the Pooh, but like naked little yellow bear Winnie the Pooh, is right? The Christopher like, Robin made. tales or whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be like um, some. We could do. I mean, they made Gingerbread Man, right? So like, we can make oh, yeah. all the like holiday figures. We still. Well, don't then, have I mean, there's like the the Grimm Brothers or Grimm stories. Claus. I can't remember what the yeah, original so could, title so was. Could we get uh, the Muffin Man? Could we get Sleeping Hansel Beauty? And like, yeah, Hansel and Gretel, uh, Humpty Dumpty, all that. St- do we want these things in Hero Clicks? I don't even I don't know, know. But we, could we get? Could we get them? Yes. Um, and it's kind of fun that they're like non Marvel, non DC, and they could just be a, a thing, right? Yeah. And um, I'll insert Jeff Goldblum. Like they were too worried, too preoccupied with if they could. They didn't think about what would happen if they did or whatever. Yeah, Jurassic Park. If they nonsense. should, yeah, or something. Ooh, yeah, there's a good one. Like uh, Island of Doctor Moreau. I'll get a bunch of half half dog, half monkey, half tiger people. Ooh, Ooh. really? They're not half people at all. It's just like animals that are cobbled into the into people shapes so it's more oh, like uh, weird yeah more like high evolutionary where he's pseudo like, anthropomorphic animals yeah but like that that's what the original island of dr moreau was was just okay yeah okay. interesting hmm. and well with one of our first previews simia you want to jump into camo camo yeah. the prime for King Shark, for Notorious yeah, here. primed to give you one of the morph, one morphined friend from Heroclix. Shark God Week. Bow before Camo. So Camo is absolutely rocking his uh, Harley Quinn, and the, uh, not Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls, geez, the Harley Quinn animated series uh, look. So oh, I'm okay. pretty sure that's what this is based off of. I've never read about him in the comics, but I did see somebody post what he looks like in the comics, and it's quite different. Um, someone was like, well, they really should have had like a different sculpt, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, the whole point of a prime is that it's like the same sculpt, different like yeah. features. 
They add and you more so, hat. You more since crap. King Shark is from the Harley Quinn show, even if this one isn't based on like that camo appearance, it has to share like that at least the base sculpt of King Shark. There's very few times where they absolutely diverted from uh, the sculpt of like with the Prime. The most recent I can think of was the Ghost Rider from Fantastic Four where the standard super air was just like a single oh, base yeah. and then the prime was a peanut, peanut. base. That's, so, that's like unheard of. That's why. Yeah, that was because then they didn't have a motorcycle anywhere else in that set. So it was literally yeah. just for a prime. Uh, but anyhow, Camo, he comes in with the cosmic energy team ability. He comes in at 110 points, animal deity, monster ruler. He's got the portal to the red. Uh, that's the thing that animal man taps into as well it's like the dc's equivalent of i don't know just like all living things are part of the red so portal to the red oh. blades claws fangs steel energy when camo moves before moving you may place him adjacent to a friendly character within four squares if that character is exactly this that's his whole trait uh but if that character is exactly like four squares in front of him that means he gets to be placed five squares away because he being placed adjacent, he can be placed oh, in yeah. front of them. In front of them, yeah. And then top dial, he has a 10-speed charge. So he's actually got a 10-speed, uh, well, it'd be five-speed. Yeah, it'd be five-speed <laughs> after having, but because of this, it'd be, yeah, a full-speed charge, essentially, which is really cool. Uh, his second trait is a god amongst fish. At the beginning of your turn, generate a shark bystander, max one, free choose a friendly bystander and move it up to its speed value period if the bystander has dolphin it may make an attack so for free he can just move any friendly wow. bystander up to its speed value i don't know how that exactly works with constructs if there's anything that like gets a huge boost from that like maybe the chainsaw likes to move up to its speed there value and then flurry or something or flurry dang that's pretty solid yeah uh but the shark bystander that he makes obviously has the dolphin symbol it has an eight speed charge with an 11 attack blades 17 defense with toughness and three printed damage so pretty solid little bystander has one little drawback though so this camo has no way to make water terrain on his own and the shark bystander has a trait that is at the end of your turn if shark doesn't occupy water terrain ko it so if you're playing on a heavily watered map or if you have some water terrain that like these guys can land on or you're playing some sort of, I don't know, fishy-themed kind of thing where like, okay. you're generating water terrain, maybe like the Deadpool with the floaties or something, uh, you can keep these guys alive. If not, then every turn they can move eight squares, make an attack, and then charge another four squares to make another attack. So... Every turn he generates one, and every turn he can use that free to do the move, and since they have Dolphin, it gets to make an attack. Ooh, oh, you yeah. know what I just thought about? What's that? Um, Good old Dr. Demonicus. This is like some Golden Age stuff that Nick doesn't Fury. matter to oh, anyone. Ancient, yeah. ancient back here. Yeah, this this doesn't we apply that. to any we that Golden playable... Age yeah, no playable uh, format outside of Golden Age, uh, but I just I just really want to see what this does. Uh, gosh, where was Doctor Demonicus? Was he? A, okay, there he is. Uh, which one was it? Star Child. Star Child has a has the dolphin symbol. It's colossal size. Uh, Eleven attack with psychic blast. Four damage. Three range, one lightning bolt, colossal, so it can shoot out of being okay. based. So, yeah, it was like a it's somewhat boys, fun even. combo. You can move Star Child ten squares, make a free close attack. Does it say uh, no? Make an attack. So you can shoot. You can move Star Child ten squares, shoot three more squares, eleven for four with psychic blast. And then do the whole shebang over again as Star Child's own little power action. And that combo will only cost you 190 points because Dr. Demonicus is 80 and Camo is 110. Wow. <clears throat> Anyhow, 
going on i really thought that i, would I be do something. just like i do like the bystander help though anything <laughs> yeah. that like makes bystanders like helps them do anything is i was trying to think like cool. what bystander has the dolphin symbol i know like aquaman's tentacles and stuff but yeah they're not gonna uh, move very far are they no nope definitely Nuh-uh. not <laughs> so what does Kamo's dial look like? He has zero range, triple lightning bolt. He has improved movement for elevated, destroys blocking when he moves through it, and then improved movement through adjacency. He starts with 10 speed charge, 12 attack with super strength, 19 defense with invincible, and then 5 damage with exploit. His second click is the exact same, except his damage goes down to 4. His third click is 8 speed, 12 attack, 19 defense with impervious and then still a four damage exploit and then on click four he remains the exact same except his attack value goes down one clicks five and six are the exact same so he has on those clicks he has flurry precision strike and uh shape change and then he has a special defense power that is stop impervious super senses so bottom dial he has three rollouts which is pretty cool. Two of those protected from Outwit and Pulse Wave, um, which is even more cool. But yeah, I really like this guy for 110 points. Is he going to break into like the competitive scene? I doubt it. I don't see. I don't see him doing anything massively insane. But I really think he's got some huge fine. survivability. Cool. Traded Steel Energy on those bottom clicks. I think he's going to heal off those stop clicks more often than getting double tapped. Um, he doesn't have a way to mastermind to his sharks, but just having a secondary attacker constantly popping out that like your opponent can't stop. They're like it's not a light leadership role. It's not anything. They just it just spawns next to him every single turn, and then every single turn he can do the free move it to make an attack, even if it like moves zero, and then just like makes a second attack. He, they essentially have like a charge flurry because of him. Yeah. So I really like him. I think he's fun. I think he's cool. I, I like it. It's just it's just a fun design. Also, uh, flurry at the end with the with the double stop clicks with the yeah. traded steel energy, triple bolt precision strike, steel energy flurry. Well, Are you kidding me? Oh. I really just don't think there's a way that you uh, put him down the first time you try. Oh, like because like you can't no. pulse wave him. Um, there's like you could all black like necro sword him. I guess. But yeah, like, that'd be it. But a triple rollout, most teams aren't going to be set up to be able to get rid of all three rollouts, rollout, especially when two of them, of them are pulse wave outwit. Yeah, Ugh. gnarly. I yeah, it's so. This guy's going to be a ton of fun. Speaking of a ton of fun, during their local pulp spotlight article, they made uh, a showed off another dial from Notorious, and it's. It's Polka Dot Man, who, this is just super cool. They're like, hey, you know what? The Suicide Squad, or whatever it's called. Pretty big success. Maybe we should start cranking out some characters. You know, they this threw makes Peacemaker me think that into the Batman They were originally going to cast Jim Carrey. Like, his his creepy yeah, face dude. makes me think Jim Carrey was meant to be Polka Dot there Man. There is something unsettling about this dude's, like, smile, lower half of his face. It's very, definitely very the, creepy. the massive smile and then, like, the black holes for eyes. It just makes totally me think of, like, the Corinthian or, eyes. I don't know, something. Yeah, he's Ooh. terrifying. Um, but I think he's really, really fun figure to play. So he's got Gotham City Underworld, Suicide Squad's celebrity. He is a team player. He can fly. He is a four range one bolt. He has three clicks of life. He has a click one through three. He has a second starting line, five through seven, and then a, one more starting line of a nine through 11 starting line. Uh, and his power is just all over the place. So it's like Pensai with RCE. And then click two is like charge with impervious. And then his third click is precision strike with prop. And none of these powers double up ever again on his dial. And it just constantly goes through like, oh, this would be a good barrier piece. Or this would be a good blades. Or this would be a good running shot. And then some of them would be like, no, these wouldn't work with some TK, CCE, like some really random ones in here. Um, But it's just hilarious. Super funny. Like his stats are all over the place. They're polka dotted. It's, he's he's polka dotted. It's it's really cute. It's really funny, um, and I enjoy I enjoy it a lot. I love I love the thematicness that his dial is also polka dots and he is polka dots and it's really funny. So he has free roll a d six, 
return them to the resulting click number. Click number one, click number five, or click number nine. So the beginning click for each three of his dials. I don't know if you can start on any of these. It yeah. looks like they all have a green starting they're all, line. Like, they're all a green yeah. starting line. You can choose and to start only one on point a value. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, it's pretty cool. You can start with TK if you want to, or you can start with Barrier if you want to, or you can start with some Pensai. And then, you know, well, actually, let's get into this next trade here. So Dots, all she wrote, which ugh, I love a good pun. Love, love, love a good pun. Polka Dot Man takes a maximum of two damage from effects, period. When Polka Dot Man is KO'd after resolutions, other friendly characters of the Suicide Squad, keyword, they get to heal two clicks. In Like, super cool. Like, man, I think playing a fun thematic Suicide Squad team is going to be a great time. So, yeah, I think he's got three clicks of life. He can only ever take two damage uh, from any effect at a time. So you've got to at least two tap him here. Uh, Cause he's just going to go to his last click on any point line. And if you don't do that, then he can just heal back up to his top click of any line, which is really, yeah. really cool. So I do love that. But, doesn't yeah. rely on the suicide squad team ability. It just goes off the T like the keyword. Yeah. Um, just heal. It's yeah. Really nice. So like, you know, Scarab a team player, could be like, so... you know, damaged and then Poco dot man dies and then Scarab heals two clicks. Does Scarab have the Suicide Squad? Oh keyword? no, that's Secret Six. Never mind. <laughs> oh okay, I was like, what? Um, but yeah, so for Suicide Squad, it's really cool. And then if he's on a Gotham City Underworld, he can go ahead and he can copy that. And if he's on a celebrity team, he can copy whatever the celebrity's got. Probably some Avengers, probably some other stuff. Spider Man. So I just think he's a ton of fun. I I really like Polka Dot Man. I think he's hilarious. I can't wait to play him with all the other fun random villains and a Suicide Squad. We also did get. A look at the San Diego Comic Con happening this weekend. Um, Batman, the, the Merman, Batman. Yeah, so San Diego Comic Con uh, released figure. the first three figures of this year, which was Batman, Space Ghost, and the Hawkeyes. We've already covered the Space Ghost and the Hawkeyes. I'm pretty sure. I think those already came out. Um, yes. But Batman, this mermaid Batman, he comes in at 75 points with the Batman team ability. Uh, The biggest things about him is he gives friendly characters that share a keyword with him the dolphin symbol. He has Atlantis, Batman family, detective, Gotham City, martial artist. So a lot of people can get bat or can get the dolphin symbol just because he's on the team. And then he has free generate a water terrain marker in a square within range and line of fire. Just a single one. Uh, and then when he would be KO'd, you can replace him with another character named Batman. You turn it to its not last non-KO click, roll a d6, heal it equal to half the result. That character can't be otherwise healed this game. He comes in at 75 points only, and he's seven clicks long. He, it's a very Batman dial, where it's, you know, outwit, charge, combat reflexes. Uh, he does have something interesting where he can equi- unequip something and then equip it to himself, but it's a power action, and it's once per game. So I kind of wish that that wasn't his attack power as old dial since it's only once per game, but that is his attack power as old dial. Uh, it feels like a very <sighs> pretty I, strange. It feels like a a Batman that we I don't know. Kind of reminds me of like Leatherwing, just because of the dolphin symbol and like the, oh, the sure. power combos and stuff. Um, I will say like I'm not like itching to get this guy right away i do want to get him on my shelf Not at really. some point because i think it's hilarious that like his sculpt is half dolphin half batman but um no I, I think it'll be interesting if people try to give like martial artist or detectives or something the dolphin symbol i don't know outside of it's, that I, I don't see what you're playing him for though he's a pretty just really just kind of like oh it's batman and eh, we yeah. give him some dolphin power i guess i think and a, maybe lot, a lot of times we just get it. like you know, plain old Batman. Like I, I don't know where this one came up, but the, um, the starter set for 2024 Batman is up on Clicks Nexus, and there's a 75.1 there, and he doesn't have the Batman team ability. He has Justice League team ability, and then printed <sighs> stealth on his dial. Wild. And That's got to be the first time we've had a Batman with printed stealth. I'll say for 75 forever. points. I'd rather play the uh, the mermaid Batman than this one, but you know, only marginally. Dang. Even the Batman from Notorious, like he's uh, he's like the absolute power storyline, so it's like a different Batman. But like charge in cap, 
enhancement isn't very Batman to me. So somehow Mermaid Batman is more Batman than the Absolute Power one. I don't know. That's wild. Yeah. But no, no, good Batmans come and goes. But we we have seen the iconic Nightfall one, and I think I we put our rubber stamp of approval on that one that generates that five one is, or no four bystanders, four dude, whole that, bystanders. That's Batman. Like yeah. Nightfall is that's for good. That's Bruce Wayne Batman right there, dude. So, but this kind this one's kind of fun. Maybe for all you Bat fans out there, you'll enjoy it. I know all the Bat mites of the world would be like, "Oh, I love this funny little Batman." Ooh, I can't wait to add him to my collection. So I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but that is like WizKids' Facebook feed. Honestly, follow the new uh, WizKids Hero Clicks page because they're yeah. posting a ton on if there. If you guys. haven't already, like, yeah. And we'll get into this a little later. Really there's cool. <clears throat> actually no, we'll get into it right now. There's there's like a little bit of like people like, oh, like strange that WizKids like suddenly made this WizKids Hero Clicks page. Blah blah blah. Hero Clicks players for as long as I can remember online have just blasted whiz kids on any post they're like hey here's our new board game that we're coming out with and like people just like blast it with like oh, let me yeah. ask you about hero clicks why did i why did i only pull one super rare in my like brick why why do i not have enough chases i spent 200 dollars at your company last year do you know how big of a business i am like i people comment wild stuff and we've covered threads for about this Dude. The <laughs> so it makes no not sense to me for them not to have split here. Yeah, yeah. Like, if I if I were a company that made Hero Clicks, like I had like you know a popular board game that like came out with consistently and had like a big rabid fan base, and then I also made like one off stuff that people might be interested in. I probably wouldn't want my comments on like the one off stuff filled with wild just like people, just constantly right, you know. Yeah. We've covered enough threads. We even did like I uh, we did like a redo thread that one time where I replayed some of like the best hot takes from like Twitter or something. So it makes plenty of sense to me as to why they would do this. And honestly, with the amount of stuff that they're posting on this WizKids Hero Clicks page, it feels like it's more of like a genuine uh step in the right direction rather than them like trying to divert bad attention away from like their other posts it feels like they're actually trying to engage with the community more and so yeah i think a good job in that aspect yeah absolutely because it's like it's cool and it's like okay if i don't think you can hate the new page i really don't think so we now have a page where it's like oh if i follow this I don't see, and I don't care about other board games besides Hero Clicks. Boom! I only see Hero Clicks. Awesome, perfect. And also, WizKids is just overall more active. They're posting way more cool stuff, way more previews, way more just fun. Look at the sculpt. I know people people keep going like, "Oh, it's called Dialed In," but we don't see a dial. And yeah, sorry to make fun of some of you guys, but like, dude, some of these sculpts just rock. And you know, I don't necessarily want everything to be spoiled anyways. There are some figures where I'm like, dude, I literally can't wait to see what it does. But for the most part, I love seeing like the new sculpts because I'm also, I mean, you know, we're, we're, I hear Dial H, we're like, oh, dude, every part of the figure is awesome. Can't wait to check it out. Uh, man, that Hawkman was insane. Oh my gosh. Bloody covered Hawkman is gnarly zombie Hawkman. Like all these are really cool. Seeing the sculpts is dope. And yeah, seeing the sculpts makes me go, what does it do though? You know, and that just helps build up hype. And so I don't need to see everything all at once. I like I like the sprinkle of, you know, some dials here, some news there, some whatever. I like the the sprinkle of spoilers and previews before every set. Well, you know, and let's not pretend like fun. the collectors of like the miniatures of this game make yeah. up a huge market, if not like a majority of the market. I don't really know, but people that just collect and don't even play, they collect based off of sculpts and like you know maybe keywords maybe specific like issues yeah i mean i know like part of what makes me buy certain game. figures is just the sculpts alone oh yeah exactly i mean that's what got me into the game it was just like oh these are tiny little superhero statues awesome i want these oh it's a game yeah and it's like oh, okay well, i'm sold you know that's dope so it's really cool so honestly you know pat on the whiz kids back on whiz kids is back for uh for doing the new whiz kids hero clicks page and it's just a ton of fun and for constantly updating it like literally every day 
basically every day. It's kind of awesome. They didn't post today, which is why I was like, ah, oh, literally every day. I'm like, ah, never mind. It's a couple of days, post, 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 a couple of days, post, post, post. And But I love it. It's literally like three or four times a week, HeroClick stuff versus not that much before, you know? So it's pretty sweet. Hey, guys, before we get into this next topic, I just want to break it down a little bit more cleanly because we were really excited to get into it and we kind of skimmed around. So if you weren't aware... WizKids posted a world's prizing list and then the Facebook community, not as a whole, but like quite a few people grabbed their like torches and pitchforks and some rightfully so some went in very tactfully and some went in very succinctly and just messaged WizKids. Some went in with a little bit more brute force, but there was this huge coalition of people calling for uh, a change to the prizing and So that's basically the summation of what we're about to talk about. I don't at any point mean to call out anyone specifically. I do think there were some bad actors in the community, people that took this a little too far. While like a call for, you know, change is fine. There's a few people that I do think just took it a little too far. But that's not necessarily you that I'm talking about if you were one of these people. But if you had no idea what was going on, that is what was going on. And I never want this community to be awful for anyone including the people that make the game but more so i don't want somebody who might like this might be their first world's experience seeing people that they look up to or like voices of the community or just hundreds of people on facebook or whatever and thinking that worlds is not worth it because of the prizing because just realistically most people that go to worlds and play in singles won't be in the top 32 that's just a mathematical probability that's how numbers work so i do think that it was a good call for people to message WizKids and voice their concerns. I think a few people took it too far. I don't mean to point fingers at anyone specifically, but again, uh, that's where we are. That's what we're about to talk about. WizKids did the next day instantly change what the prizing structure was, and they unveiled that they had trophies all along. So just because they don't list something doesn't mean that it's not going to be there. So we shouldn't make assumptions, I guess, is the moral of the story. Anyways, let's go ahead. This was uh, a huge thing that set the HeroClix world on fire. Uh, Temporarily uh, turned world. Facebook into realms, which is yeah, impressive. Um, it's impressive. It was rough. Like a few, a few vocal minority people in the community can just really sway the rest of the people to to not even like you know think logically for a second. So it. It was pretty wild, and I won't lie, I, I understand where some of the reactions are coming from, and I even right away was like, oh, this, this ain't great, you know, like, this is pretty rough. Uh, so the first draft of prizing, I'm not going to go over that, we'll just go over to the new prizing, but first draft had some things where it's like, oh, man, uh, like, we're not going to get into all of it, but, like, the top four got, uh, was it, what was it, Rise and Fall, like, Chase Prime Rise and Fall set, and then first place so, got a Avengers Forever factory set. Is that right? Yeah. So like that's still the way it is. It's still going to be um, top it, four. Get it is still that. They added fall. they added a lot more from that. Yeah. Though. So they, they've added more. Um, the top two are going to get uh, Batman team up chase and prime sets, and then uh, they get like all of the top four prizing as well as that. Um, there was it was actually a fairly comprehensive prize list beforehand. The thing that I think was the most glaring and like by comprehensive, I mean, a lot of con exclusives and stuff like that were in there. Yeah. Um, The thing that was most glaring is X-Men rise and fall wasn't like the most well-received set. And at this point in time, it's just a kind of an aged set. No one's excited about that set anymore. No one's like grabbing that off the booster. We've had, I think two X sets since then. Um, exactly well close to it maybe like cool. one and a half so like a chase prime set from that just doesn't seem exciting especially if i'm like you know i'm gonna sweat my way through all of singles and like you know up to like the top four and then like i get knocked out in top four and that's what i walk away with it's like well that's not all that i walk away with i also walk away with literally one of every convention exclusive from this year and previous years but right, you get all that um, accumulated there's yeah there's well. so much stuff plus like top 16 gets the coveted most amazing exclusive oh, of dude, all time i'm so jealous 
Brainiac and Lex Luthor. I mean, man, how are you not pining for a Brainiac and Lex Luthor? I, uh, big dude. Yeah. We gave away so many, and people were like, do you have more? And I'm like, no, we only had this many. I'm sorry. You know, it was crazy. People were rabid for Brainiac Lex. Yeah. The goat. So, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty um, awesome. Uh, also, your only other chance to get Gingerbread Man, since he's oh, off yeah. the store, is in t- well, why, we're, let's not totally get into, like, prizing or whatever, but another thing is that the winner didn't have the design a piece. That was the biggest thing, you, yeah. That's so, the biggest thing. Outside and if you remember of last Rise and year, Fall and... It wasn't, uh, it wasn't on there last year initially either. Right. So it was kind of like, oh, what's going on? But yeah, sorry. Them, me. Yeah, so outside of like them uh, prizing out like with like slightly older sets, because uh, I think, I can't remember what else it was. There's, they changed uh, Avengers Forever was being prized out for like maybe the finalist or something. I don't see that here anymore. Yeah, the, the winner the winner got, I think, I believe a full set of Avengers Forever. Yeah, so Avengers Forever is like another one where it's just like, probably going to rotate honestly most people don't play a whole lot from that set it may yeah i will say it's not a bad like money set it's not a great money set i think Um, the like the super like richards is great is that avengers forever avengers forever yeah arachnite oh what am i thinking oh i'm thinking empire jeez Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Avengers Forever um, isn't that bad then? Yeah. No, Avengers Forever isn't really terrible. It's really oh, not. It's kind of weird Empire. that it's not like if Avengers it, well, 60th. It might have been Empire. I will say. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's like strange that it's not Avengers 60th for whatever reason. It's very reason. strange. Um, yeah. Like for the first draft. It's not either now, but like it was just odd because um, that would have been like a holy smokes, a Chase Prime set of this with like the Avengers Primes. All the Primes, are, literally all the Primes are oh, yeah. awesome. In, in Avengers 60th, and then all the chases are insane, plus an Ultra Chase. Like, that would have been an insane set to get a, uh, a chase Empire promo. comes with Venom Magneto. Um, oh, yeah, Empire Empire would have been chase, solid. It, it was a weird Hulk. chase Yeah, theme. there's some decent stuff in you there. Know? Like a it chase was, it was all set. over the place with the chases, but, like, it was still cool. Like, Venom Mags, whatever. I mean, but, like, a lot of people were also had the problem with a lot of this stuff is going to rotate more right. than likely because they said they're going to do a pretty big rotation that a lot of this will probably just be silver age but again they're doing a lot of support for silver age so i don't i know that there there are arguments of course that silver age is more the secondary way to play hero clicks and obviously modern is like the main way I so think silver might even like take a back burner for uh theme and theme pulp. pulp and it yeah, might be like a way to classify like what age you know they let us do a whole year of silver and now they're going to be like okay but like here's this actual new format that's going to be played as silver or as modern whereas like silver itself like won't be as as common but it will still be it'll be common in the fact that it'll be attached to like theme or uh pulp which i think it's attached to theme right. in uh in worlds here but it is uh so it's attached to theme and worlds but um, yeah, I, I don't see any side event for just specifically silver, which is cool. But yeah, the the last thing was uh, they didn't have Heroclix design a figure, which yeah, every Heroclix conversation. As soon as you find someone that's like new, that like you know is in the game, like someone that you've never met before, and you're talking about Heroclix, I think the conversation at some point always devolves to if you won worlds, what figure would you design? I mean, that used to be one of the questions we would always ask a listener. It's for the first time they were It's wrong. ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Ubi- I don't know. Whatever. It's so ingrained in hero clicks that it's like secondhand nature to propose that question. It's one of the most amazing prizes that anyone could ever win. It's something that just like it doesn't just like write your name in the game. It like puts like this base out there it puts this thing out into the competitive scene or you know maybe not the competitive scene but like into the collectible space where everyone can have a piece of like your art forever including you and yeah it's hard to beat that prize i'll say it's almost impossible uh and the thing that like really gets me about this is it seems like fool me once like shame on me fool me twice shame on you um WizKids said that they accidentally left it off last year, and I took them at their word. Uh, they, I don't think they said that they accidentally left it off this year, but they did say that they added it back. It feels like a lot less of an accident 
because it happened two years in a row and because they never reinstated it for Team Worlds last yeah. year when they added it back for singles. I don't care if it gets added back for Team Worlds. And like I, I should say, on the outset of all of my opinions on this, I have no stake in competitive hero clicks because I don't participate in it anymore. Right. So I don't care about your guys' prize in competitive players. I'm sorry, I just really don't. And like your your insane ramblings and just absolute off the wall takes and like the reaction to this really disgusted me way more than like the actual prizing or like lack thereof. So I'm more ashamed to be part of like the competitive community in any aspect than to be like associated with whiz kids. And uh, that's my big hot take for the episode. All right. Yeah. Like there was some really gross takes. There was, there were some um, actually some invasive bad ones, really invasive bad ones. like tactics being used, um, near doxing kind of stuff being done, and then also just like blowing it completely out of proportion. At the end of the day, this is a game that you should be playing for fun, in my opinion. And if you're treating this tournament like some sort of like emotional or psychological like effect on you, if you don't get certain things fulfilled i seek help please like that's all i can say (laughs) like this game should not be what keeps you going in life (laughs) at the end of the day it's a game you should have fun doing it and if like the pricing isn't like up to what you want then like most people in my opinion you could just say well maybe i won't do worlds this year i don't think you know the pricing is that great uh like i've never played in worlds uh, like i've played in worlds multiple times i've never played in worlds because i thought i was going to do well enough to win like i've always looked at the prizing obviously everyone does Uh, of course and you can say like everyone has a chance at winning like first at worlds and that's a lie that's just lying no one no one that like goes to worlds for their first time has as good of a chance as like people that are at their eighth worlds or have won like multiple states or like national titles or something you know look at like isaac he not only has won worlds and multiple states this year but he almost took home another w last year like you're never gonna convince me that i have as much of a chance as isaac does yeah um but to bring it back to the design of figure topic although i will say this year you actually do have as much of a chance as isaac does because neither of you are playing in worlds so you that's very fair yeah. yeah i have the exact <laughs> same amount yeah actually yeah i technically have a better chance because like i don't know i could slip and fall and like Ooh. just land on like a pre-prepared team and be like oh no i'm playing what's going on but I, he won't even be there so yeah um yeah yeah to get back to design a figure so i i don't want to rail against the community too bad but like there are some several some real bad actors that need to check themselves yeah, there was. Um, I mean that in the hardest aspect possible. Like, literally, check yourself. Take a moment. Take a breath before you go on like online ramblings and witch hunts and stuff. Literally, just remember there's other also, humans at the end of like the line of where you're talking, and I don't know. Do the bare minimum of tough. being a human before you. I know there's the whole. Go off the oh, rails. they are just faceless, nameless company. They're yeah. not people that love the game and try to do whatever and they're like no nah, they're just these are faceless nameless robot people i you know that i'm yelling at and yeah. swearing and cussing and it's just like well actually these are people that have a job to do and i'm sure are passionate about the game and obviously the community is very very passionate as well because they got very heated very dramatic very fast yeah uh, and i will so, say like they well, would have had the same reaction if if the community had come over as like cordial and you know, I guess, yeah, if it had been like half the people that had been bombarding them, I imagine uh, it would have been the same reaction. Yeah. But, uh, it was a day later that they switched everything up. They added a whole bunch of prizing. They added design a figure back to the, uh, world's singles. Um, they added trophy listings, which they already had the trophies designed. So that was something yeah. that like they just hadn't they added in the original did. one, but they yeah. clearly already had them on hand because they posted a picture of them a day later. And they, so they already were like in hand on site or whatever. Uh, but that's like another thing where people are complaining, like you like, don't even have trophies. They're like who has ever wanted a hero clicks trophy in my opinion. But yeah, 
besides the point. Um, yeah. It seems to me like WizKids is trying to get rid of Design a Figure because this is the second year in a row and they never reinstated it for uh, Team Worlds. They didn't do it last year. They never reinstated it last year. They're probably not going to reinstate it this year. I don't think anyone's going to get them to go back on that at this point. Yeah. But I think if they want to get rid of Design a Figure permanently, if they want to get rid of that as a uh, prize at all, which I, I'm on the fence of, like, I obviously, that's, I think, the top tier prize. Like I said I at, the, know, it's at the beginning of this, so awesome. I don't think there's a way that you fix that. I don't think there's a way that you ever get rid of that and have the same kind of, like, prizing that you've had before. I think, I think there could be. And I'll make a, a reference that a lot, a lot of people were saying, or a comparison a lot of people were using, was the Hero Clicks for Huntingtons. Right. Which, off, off rip, wow, amazing prizing. That that tournament had i will i will just say initially a lot better prizing than this tournament does it's a little more front heavy and very really really heavy for fellowship but and this also will go to the the, the statement a lot of people made is, is whiz kids trying to kill competitive and in my opinion if you're going to try to kill competitive don't do this do do something like a little a little better have more fellowship prizing i loved huntington's that they had the huge fellowship prizing and that may sound biased but i do i i like that they had fellowship for like okay you may not have be winning the best right the winner still gets awesome prizing so like okay if you're doing great and you're being you're playing cutthroat maybe being a bit of a jerk and doing whatever you got to do to win you know, not seeing people that do whatever it takes to win are jerks, but we've all seen Rocky. Come on. You know, there's some Ivan Vankos out there. Uh, but anyways, then, okay, bada bing, bada boom, you win. Congratulations. Here's your prizing for winning. But then if you're genuinely a good person or a fun person to play against, or you're playing a unique team or you're doing blah, 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 here is fellowship prizing. And I honestly, I would probably enjoy worlds more if it was like no longer a world tournament if it had just this big focus on fellowship that would be a ton of fun where maybe you're not rewarding a player who's just being the cutthroat whatever you know hero hooks for huntington's kind of did it best where there was a ton of fellowship prizing for just being a genuinely fun person to play against a good person maybe playing a fun creative team and not just doing the whole oh cutthroat i'm gonna win i'm gonna whatever you know you know, there, there are some Ivan Vankos out there that play a little, a little, you know, if I would crush your spirit, if you die, die. I do not care if we have fun in this game. You will cry and I will win, you know? So if you're going to play like that, okay, well, you get the whatever prizing. But, like, Fellowship was awesome at Hero Clicks for Huntington's. And I think that'd be a really fun tournament to strive for. So if you wanted to make a world tournament that's like a world, let's just have a good time weekend and it's not this cutthroat whatever modern fest you know, have it be, this was, I guess, one thing I also wish they would have done, um, notorious for BRs right away, but they couldn't guarantee that yet. And they still say they can't guarantee that, yeah. but I, I really hope they can. I really, really hope they can. Cause to me, that would be a blast. If I was playing at worlds, I would literally be like, Oh, who cares about modern? A, a pre-release set is BRs. Are you kidding me? That's, that's baller. Well, um, I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say WizKids is no fault in any of this. Like, I don't want it to come off. Think like, anyone thinking that i'm 100 percent no what and, they did and i definitely think they could have had just way better pricing overall yeah. I, I will say for like the um they're giving out a lot of super old stuff for pricing and they still are you know like i but like when stuff pool. like notorious um, is something where it's easier to just not mention it and then have it if you have it it, than is. it is to say and it's we're going to try and have spot. this and then say, like, sorry, we didn't get it. And, like, people right? are disappointed because like, I came here to play with this and, like, it's not I, here. Like, yeah, well. I think it like, can be a really scary thing. Like, for yeah. the Scott Porter events earlier this year, the Hero Clicks for Huntington's, it was like, we're going to have Avengers 60th. To be fair, this was a huge ask because it was two months before it was even going to be released. That was, like, a huge, huge ask. Uh, but they clearly already had it two months out. But it was getting it shipped to the venue and all this stuff. Um and all the shipping delays and whatnot. And it was literally like the shipping company just making other deliveries <laughs> that day before they went to Lucky Dice. I was like, oh my gosh. So it's just like, goodness gracious. Shipping delays like that can happen for a day of events that we weren't able to get started uh, until four o'clock in the afternoon. It's insane. And that like killed the vibe that entire, like it was like, it was really tough 
you know, and people try to like have fun, do whatever, you know, they paid for a BR. That was super awesome. You know, there was like a lot of stuff that happened, but you know, you'd be lying to yourself if you were at Heroes for Huntington's and you were like, yeah, dude, the vibe is like, this really sucks. Um, people that maybe drove out for the day, some people weren't able to even play with Avengers 60th, you know? So it's, it's tough to promise something. It's way worse to promise something and then it doesn't happen out of your control versus not promise something and be like, yo, hey, guess what? We can do this. And then everybody's like, whoa, that's awesome. You right. know, and then maybe there are some people that are like, well, dang, if I knew I could have done this, then I would have went to Worlds, but I didn't go because it was going to be, you know, a 60th or whatever. So, you know, it's a double edged sword. Uh, you're not going to yeah. make all parties happy. But overall, I'd rather be like, a, oh, that's a pleasant surprise than, oh, well, this sucks. I was promised this. You promised me. How dare you know? Well, like, like Worlds in 2019, really, they had they had WWE stuff like shown off and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. We had no clue going into 2019 that that was going to be there. If they had said like, yeah, like we've even got some WWE here. I would have been like, I'm there. And then I get there and they're like, yeah, sorry, guys. Like shipment actually is delayed. So we didn't get those in. Can't show you guys any of those. I wouldn't have been right. furious, but I would have been like, wow, oh, man, that was like a huge bummer because I that's like one of the reasons I like really was excited for this weekend. You know, exactly. I think that's what a it's lot kind of, of a... this comes down to is like none of this Thanks, prizing bro. is really like a selling point or shouldn't be a selling point for most people that come here. Most of you are going to drop out and be like bottom 32. And that's just like, yeah. I'm not even saying that like a dig. That's just how numbers work. We had 160 some people in singles last yeah. year. And, like, you get participation prizing up until, like, top 32. The vast majority of people that sign up for Worlds are going to get participation prizing, and that's it. Uh, so, like, you have to have another reason other than this, like, top 32 prizing. So, in my opinion, right. the top 32 prizing, the people that are complaining the most and the heated the most about it are the people that are already, like, thinking that they're locked into it. And I've got, like, a short list of people that I can imagine just constantly place themselves in those positions and right. that's fine but don't try and turn the whole community against a single event because your top 32 top 16 top 8 top 4 you know that isn't good enough for you because the vast majority of people that show up at worlds aren't going to be in that and like it's just exactly it's insane that we're pretending like this is like bad at the same time so like, that's another cool thing. Uh, World singles this year is like not like years past, and it's not like last year. So you'll get a nationals buy, but there's no rock points buys, right? But also, before they did the whole buy thing, which is literally just last year, and I guess now this year, the national champions will get a buy. Before that, you had to be qualified for Worlds. Right. So you had to do all these grinders They're at Worlds qualifiers. or be like a top whatever national something, you know, finalist or whatever. But now it's like, okay, Worlds is literally an open tournament. You all, just for registering for Worlds, get a plastic man, a full set of plastic man and objects, which sure, maybe you, maybe all you winner, whatever people have a bunch of plastic man and objects, but for a lot of people, I, they don't. Yeah, um, I, I'll say so I still you might have, have a lot of the man. objects. I have but all like, of his objects. I don't have him. Yeah, it comes with plastic man so that's as well. Cool. Which is Gwenpool is actually a pretty, like, originally, she was a pretty hard to get con. So that's cool. And then Krampus is just like, he's pretty cool. But like, that's what you get for just showing up, paying yeah. 20 bucks and playing. Like, that's okay. And you're allowed to just show up and pay $20 and play in Worlds because in years past, that wasn't the case, besides yeah. literally last year. So that's Krampus is exactly neat. who would be coming for some of the people that have been on Facebook lately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not happy but with like, your Christmas presents, huh, little boy? Going to yeah. make a Facebook Live about it, huh? And let you me know, put I, you in my bag. So that's, that's another thing. To everyone that, like last year when I did the Disney Plus video, which was a joke, which was like a funny joke video where we asked WizKids to send us like a brick of Disney Plus to unbox, like that didn't understand that it was a funny joke video. And we're like, wow, really sad to see a grown man beg for plastic toys. Now look what's happening. There's a ton of grown <laughs> men begging for plastic toys and Not no one made joke. fun of them. Genuinely Not thinking they're joke. making the world better by yeah. doing so. And look, yeah. this isn't me trying to poo-poo on all you guys that did it. I'm just saying I did it before all of you <laughs> as a joke because I thought it was funny and people ripped into me for that. Okay, yeah. fine. I'm used to getting hate comments. Totally cool. Not everybody likes me. Not everybody is a fan. Uh, 
but then everybody else does it and it's like oh this is totally cool this is passable this is great and i'm like no 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 that is what a grown man begging for plastic toys looks like come on now i genuinely like to be like fair like i genuinely don't know and like i i haven't looked through all of the comments and stuff like i just at some point it was just too much happening and people thinking that memes are magic and like they can just meme their memes didn't oh, change thanos that's memes didn't change viral. any figure that's not like what works whiz kids looks at comments and stuff but like if you put an image macro with text and it's like an old Here's format whiz kids isn't movie. like oh man the power of this ancient meme artifact that you dug up yeah. and added text to has changed my mind oh man but the picture of hero Cook's community middle <laughs> finger to me whiz kids oh no that that's <laughs> cutting out my soul we better add what? trophies that we already had designed and, and in hand we better do that real quick guys uh yeah. flip it around in 24 hours just, no um it's just so funny i i at this point i really kind of want to go through and count up how many people commented and like sent messages to whiz kids because i'm actually curious now if there's more than 32 or if like everyone that sent in like some message to them thinks that they're gonna hit at least top 32 because yeah, i'm like i don't know. some of you have to realize like who knows top 16 like you know that's single elimination at the very least in top 16 yeah so there's a good chance you don't get to top eight no matter how good your team is or how good you think you play, mm-hmm. like there's a good chance you don't make top eight, and there's an even better chance you don't make top four, and that continues until like you know you get to like the finalist, actual like design a fig thing. So yeah, so yeah. really interesting. The only prizing that I actually wish they would have added was just some fellowship prizing. You know, I already did my fellowship rant, but I would really love it if they added some True. fellowship prizing. Um, that'd really be about it. Uh, I get, I understand the complaints for saying, oh, literally all of top 32, I don't know what Spider-Man this is, but like Luke Cage, Superman, Wonder Woman, Batmite, all of those are like super old, right? They're like eight, five, four years old, whatever they are at this point in time. But also we don't know, maybe, and like, this is like a hopeful, this is like a half glass, you know, glass half full type thing. Maybe they're making legacy cards for all these figures. Hmm? Huh? Hmm? Never think about that. No, you just think about yourself, don't you? Uh, I I guess I probably <laughs> doubt that that's going to happen. But uh, it'd be funny if they did. <laughs> just saying. Um, so, like, maybe. I mean, yeah. And they, they've also, like, added random stuff throughout, yeah, like, the, the con. Like the con. They, um, throughout the event, did. they've added stuff. Uh, I know in 2019, towards the end of 2019, um, like, it would have been, like, Saturday or Sunday on the BR tables, they started throwing out like all the old stuff that like hadn't sold. So like, um, I got a Supreme Intel- intelligence coming in third in a battle Royal and like, granted oh, it was that, 2019. That was cool. Yeah. Like, it was a little old. It was but still like, like, heck yeah. Like I, I already bought one of these for like 15 bucks. I didn't want to have to buy two, but like, I'll gladly take it as a third place prize in a battle Royal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I got the the Punisher van for one of those BRs. Yeah. Like, this is so tight. I never owned the Punisher van before. And like, if they hand out like stuff like that, where it's like, oh, it's a big cool sculpt, and like it's a super awesome shelf piece. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Heck yeah. Uh, before we get any further, um, the easiest way to check on the schedule and the full prize list and everything like that is just type in HeroClicksWorlds.com, hit enter, and it'll take you. Like that URL will take you to the WizKids.com Worlds 2023 page. So yeah, HeroClicksWorlds.com. That's all you have to type in. You should know so, how to type both those words. Uh, if you've I been playing this game long enough, HeroClicks Worlds pretty easy. But yeah, I know uh, that, that'll yeah, take you I to like the main page, and then you can look at the prizing under World Championship that we've been talking about here. You can look at the D and D onslaught stuff. You can look at the side events. Uh, the side events also have some pretty crazy prizing, to be honest. Oh yeah, um, let's uh, let's jump into like the side events. So yeah. BRs, we know what BRs are. They fire off every ninety minutes. They're twenty bucks. Blah blah blah. So they have a, a eight person pulp tournament, which is pretty cool. Single elimination, just straight up eight players, and you just it's just like oh you lost, you're out. That's a really cool idea to do these quick little tournaments. I like these. They have a pulp and theme eight person tournaments. Those are twenty bucks, uh, and then. Every time you win a game, you get a figure. 
and you just get an additional prize figure each time you win a game. Those that's really cool. That's I actually really like that yeah. idea. That's a neat structure for a tournament. So uh, especially if it's, it's like it's a new neat. con each time. Do they right? That'd be so sick. They're doing another Ten of Swords storyline organized play. I'm not going to go into this. It's Ten of Swords again. Um, yeah, we saw these. Cool, yeah. At, we covered these at nationals, and we covered these yep. at other events where they held these. Um, They're doing Team Worlds, which now I forget what the prizing was before. Pretty gnarly prizing. Like this is pretty cool for Team Worlds. Uh, I I think it's neat. So it's going to be sealed. This is going to be a brick again, like it was a brick last year. So, like, that's pretty cool. They do the whole ABC team building, blah, blah, blah. It's 170 bucks per team. You're buying a brick. Top 16. Uh, the top 16 is awesome. This is cool prizing. It's you get a You get a master mold. Holy smokes. You get a spitter, the spy slash DR. You get a Deadpool the Duck, which is pretty spendy. He was an old WKO prize, so that's yeah. cool. Uh, Avengers, Million BC, Ghost Rider, Mammoth, the Phoenix Force Thane, another WKO prize, Black Dwarf, Gwenpool, the Lockjaw, another that one point three hundred dollar figure, not anymore, but cool. Shadow Cat, the cool Mark, whatever Mark Miller, Daredevil, the Flash, Reverse Flash, Superman, John Constantine, Zatanna, and a Batmobile. Like these are all super sick. Like that's loaded top sixteen prizing. Yeah, like that's insane. I mean, the, if you if you want to like compare this. And I'm assuming this is one per each team member. It doesn't say like times three on each of these, but I would assume that. I would imagine it's that's one how it's team always been wild. previously. Yeah. Uh, I, I doubt they're going to make you split it, but they can maybe. I don't know. Um, just for top sixteen, if you want to like take each one of those figures and plug them into eBay and see what like they're going for. Uh, that's a pretty decent prize for top You've 16. You've instantly made your entry back, and you get to keep all the figures. So, like, oh, yeah. you got to remember, you're paying for a brick. You're literally just splitting a brick at that point. So this is, like, pretty fine. You know, really, when you think about how, like, the cost is literally just a little more than a brick, that's not bad at all. Plus, all this stuff, making a ton of money back. Top eight is solid. You get a full come and bottom in this. Uh, you get an old man Hawkeye, Superman Prime, and a Kyle Rayner. So, yeah, some of these are older. Some of these are probably going to rotate, but... Uh, Old Man and Hawkeye definitely isn't rotating. Prize is usually cumulative. Spendy. So, and it's also cumulative. Normally, it doesn't usually, say here. Yeah, it doesn't but, specifically yeah. say, but obviously, like you know, I don't think this list yeah. is super comprehensive. You're doing um, solid. But the yeah, so quarter it'd be finalist teams. So the top four, you're getting Avengers Million BC Phoenix Prize, pretty solid prize. The finalists, you're getting an Avengers Fantastic Four Empire Factory set. Simi and I literally just talked about like 20 minutes ago that that actually is a pretty solid factory yeah, set to get. It's it, old. Gonna, it's it's going to rotate def prop more than likely, definitely. But it's still like such a, in its own way, a unique and kind of beautiful chase theme. Even if they are weren't all like playable or whatever, they're all pretty neat. And the winning team is going to a, a Ten of Swords OP kit factory set. And, dude, if that includes all the LEs and everything, money, money, money. Oh, my gosh. I think we've seen... And then, seen, of course, they're getting trophies. I don't, I don't know. I think we've seen an uh, X of Swords... Um, oh, this is the organized play factory set. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the I OP think we've set, seen dude. this before. It, it does come with, like, all the tarot cards. Oh, and... Dude, and all of the so, grand prize figures and stuff like that like that's it's literally so they're good. like cuz i if you guys have seen like the the states stuff the batman team up for whatever reason that doesn't come in clamshell it's all in like bubble wrap yeah. this x of swords op factory so set weird. stuff was in clamshell so like Ooh. we have seen these before where the like pog the um, in the yeah <laughs> they're all that's like funny. massively jammed into like a small thin cardboard box and so, also trophies oh, for all of the people that think a engraved whoa. piece of wood is important to put I somewhere. Really don't. I really I, I would put a Team show, World's dude. trophy somewhere. Like, I got so many trophies doing, like, 4-H. It's literally, yeah. like, who cares? I got, like, three trophies a year for doing all the stuff I did oh. in 4-H. And I'm like, I don't got need this. A, I was in, like, several sports. I have a like desk drawer at my parents' house completely jammed full of, like, old medals and things that like I have no use for because like at the end of the day I mean y you might remember something about the event but I think a better prize would be in this case like the X of Swords yeah. OP factory set absolutely way cooler um, so I, I will say I will here say, 
Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Okay, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. No, I'll go ahead. Yeah. You, go. <laughs> you go. No, you. No, you first. No, you first. Um, if there were going to be any design elements as a prize, this would be a pretty fine spot to just say choose a legacy card. Um, sure. I think if we don't want to do design a figure or anything, we want to start getting away from that. I think if you say, "Hey, choose a legacy card," maybe you can talk a little bit about what it might do, what you might change, but like nothing for certain. I think people would be fine with that because who doesn't have a favorite figure? You know, even you diehard meta guys are like, man, remember back when so-and-so was good? I'd love to make Overdrive nuts again or something. I don't know. But, like, that'd be pretty cool. Or, like, a man, a figure that was never meta. It it would be so great if I could make, you know, the spot from SVAC even better or something. So I think Choose a Legacy card would be a pretty fun designer element uh, to add if we are not going to have design a figure, but that's all I was going to say. I was yeah. just saying, throwing out there some design elements. I don't know how you would replace design a figure on the same level. It's tough, but I yeah, think if, if WizKids wants to phase it out, one, they need to vocalize that to the community. They need to say, like this this element has been problematic for you know whatever reasons, whatever I don't know. But they need to they need to say that out loud to the community, or not out loud, but like through a post to the community that like they're going to phase it out at some point, and right. they need to figure out a way that they can replace it that still like doesn't basically doesn't leave a hole, a gaping hole where that prize once was. Um, right. I have no clue how you would reach the same level of designing a figure for the game that you spent hours yeah. and years and you know blood sweat and tears playing i don't know how you ever completely replace that but i think if they do want to phase it out they owe it to the community to tell them straight up that like we need to phase this out because like you know blame it on it's a Marvel, headache it's DC, problematic it's whoever blah, blah, yeah blah. yeah blame it's it on just, like you know problem. like the design team doesn't like doing it the the play testers don't like playing it like I don't know what, like, put it on something somewhere. Like, you got to blame it on someone. Um, and if there's no reason to blame anyone, then, like, maybe it's not that bad of a thing and we just bring it back, we just keep it. I don't know. But if if design a figure has to go, you got to replace it with something of equal value. And I don't know what that is. I can't say. Like, design yeah, a legacy is really is cool. An equal value. Yeah, I think design a legacy is But I don't think equal, it's, like, on the it's same it's- level. Because, like... You know, you yeah, know, we have we have championship figures where they have, you know, their name emblazoned on like the dial, essentially uh, their maybe uh, maybe you do the switch clicks prize, something you know, like that. Say, but also like they can't take away from they can't take away from Huntington's prizing and make it like I, a, I a know, secondary but tournament. Like, but yeah, they definitely need to do uh, something. You know, but you know, um, if both of them had both of those, the same people would still go to each tournament. I, you know, so oh, I don't know do. if it's yeah, if it's yeah, and they already do actually. Yeah. So it's like, why not have both? And I don't know if Scott Porter would be like, whoa, whoa, hey, slow down there, ranch guy. No, no, no. <laughs> we, I get the design of Switch Clicks figure. You don't. That's for no, my no, 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 no. That's my. T- that's for my charity. All right. So international boy, you just go away. And if, and if that's the vibe, then I apologize, sir. But uh, you know, I I think it'd be a fine addition to this tournament. I I think of it as a hero clicks prize. Uh, but it has been exclusive to Huntington, the Huntington tournament. So I don't know. I think it'd be cool though. I think it'd be you know if we're saying alternatives to design a figure. Right. Choose I've a seen some things card, that were thrown out, cool. and I like. I'm sorry, guys, but like. I thought Facebook community was better than Realms. I've been ragging on Realms for so long, man. Some of the thing, some of the ideas thrown out on Facebook this last week. Oh boy, they were like, yeah, a little rough. I don't know if like Realms shut down and they all had to migrate to Facebook for a week, but geez, you guys. Had some, and by you guys, I mean like there was about twenty really loud people on Facebook. I doubt. I doubt most of our listeners are part of the. No, guys. I, I really, I really hope not. Uh, yeah, but the, like no, some of the some of the ideas were like, uh, what if the, instead of design a figure, you just let them design like a whole set? And I was like, Did someone say that. I mean, essentially, what? it was like okay. I, I think someone said like pick the next set instead, like pick the oh, upcoming that's set. Insane. And I was like, that is such a 
bigger ask than a single figure, though. Because, like, if I'm going to pick the next set, and I'm like, oh, can it be, like, any of these? Obviously, everyone's like, oh, one of these indie properties that you guys don't have the IP for. And they're like, well, That's no. That's not going to happen. And then I'm like, uh-huh. oh, this newest Marvel comic that just started, you know, like, uh, Beans of Vengeance or something. And you're like, ah, like, I don't think we really want a food-based hero click set. And I'm like, no, it's cool. They get in fights with, like, the tomatoes of... Uh, Cthulhu and stuff, but I, Dude, I just so feel like the Beans of Vengeance set. Oh man, yeah. In fact, we're not going to get Gangsta Bean and Hero Clicks or the Bean from the Bean movie in Hero Clicks. Oh, I'm yeah. so sad. There's no, there's no Iron Bean or uh, <sighs> gosh, that that just makes me go back. To what like about the, the guy the 50 who's cent eating jumping beans? beans Watching that... Cars too. Oh man, if only <laughs> the fifty cent jumping beans you could buy out of like a quarter machine. Um, no, I, Mr. I think that's a oh, much oh, worse man. ask for them. I think like that's way more impossible because that's insane. That's actually insane. Yeah. That's like you're you're smoking something, dude. Choose a set. Hello, I would like the uh, the Captain America Captain America only set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's only it's only him, and I want sixty, 60 new. Versions I want to be sixty five figures with sixty five objects, fifty burgers, fifty fries, fifty <laughs> shakes. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. yeah. Like I want that's... to recreate War of Light, except everyone is slightly different, and they're all different colors this time. So I've got a blue Atrocitus. Oh I've got gosh. a red Saint Walker. Atrocitus, uh, you cool. know. And instead of the chases being the entities, it's going to be the Justice League. Ooh, Why not? We just, just, dude, Justice League that. chases for a DC set? I, that's never been done Insane. before. I really like the idea of Justice uh, League chases. But no, designing a set probably too much of an ask compared to designing a figure uh designing a legacy card i think that's a much more reasonable um a team up card even more reasonable in my opinion like that's even like a further step down um that's something like team like team world champions get to design a team up card oh i i like that a lot Um, okay no that's cool yeah like i i don't know uh, like a single convention exclusive, so it's not like tied to a set or something. I don't know. We've never seen a champion convention exclusive that I remember, but there's got to be an option I don't think it's ever, I don't think it's somewhere thing, yeah. that like works for both parties because it does seem like, like whiz kids wouldn't make this mistake twice in a row. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they did. Maybe it was just they left it out twice in a row, but I don't know. That just seems like. Seems a little bit of a stretch, so I do feel like they're trying to get rid of it. And like I said, they never added it back to the Team Worlds last year, which makes it seem more intentional than yeah, not. I agree. But yeah, final points on that is I think they need to address it with the community, have like a little, uh, you know, whatever, not necessarily design insight article, but like a little article that says why they need to get rid of it or like what the problems that it created were and like why they're going to discontinue it and then what they're replacing it with. And I think that would have gone a lot further than just trying to like sneak it out of there. Cause like hero clicks players are extremely, extremely pedantic and like very detail heavy. So we will always notice that there will never be a year where it just slips by and we're all like, what? Yeah, that's definitely not. Oh, no one, no one noticed what? Like these are the same people that think, because you didn't put a 25 point line on Surter, you can play him at his like 400 point line for yeah, 25 geez. points. Yikes. Um, that's like the same people you're dealing with are the ones that are reading through these prizes. But anyhow, do you want to get into the uh, theme and pulp world yeah. championship prize? Because these I, are really cool. I do. Um, the last thing I'm going to say about the change of prizing before we move on completely and just drop that forever. Um, I've said a lot about it, but I will say, listen to the Critical Clicks podcast and listen to this the new podcast, the Inner Circle Jerks, which is Aries Edge and Joe Pengrazio. Uh, I don't normally plug podcasts on our podcast, but I've never listened to more diametrically opposed podcasts on this subject. So if you want to get into more drama about this specific topic of like the uh, prizing change, Listen to them. It doesn't really matter which order because, like, one is, you know, Heat Miser and one is Snow Miser. They are, like, so oh, baby. complete opposites 
that Ooh. it's insanity to me. Um, well, it's, it's it's I fall more to one side. I think you guys notice if you listen to this, uh, you notice more so that I fall to like the side of like I don't think it's as big of a deal as other people do, but. No, I, I do think if you guys want a full spectrum of the meltdown slash opposite end of the meltdown, check those out. Just don't do it if you have a chill child in the car. Uh, yeah. They're both R rated. And like, that's the, I don't know, that's the selling point for those podcasts, I guess. But yes, yeah, I don't get it. Check them out if you want more on that. But now we're going to continue the episode with Pulp World Championship. So Swiss rounds followed by a single elimination bracket. Each player will bring a 300-point modern age pulp team. Limit 64 players. Man, that's what we've been building on our con- uh, construction Ooh, little articles. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. 300-point modern entry is $20. Participation, so 64 people get a Heroclix Isaac that's not worth $20, but I think the $20 is more so you're just having a fun time playing pulp. I to think be honest. So. Yeah. Uh, top eight, get a Batman and Jaro and an Old Man Hawkeye. The finalists, the top two, get a Captain America on Pegasus Ooh. and the Wonder Woman Generations three pack. Good. Which is very good. Don't and have to the, go stand in line. Yeah, the champ gets uh, the Batman team up booster brick. A notorious booster brick and a trophy. So two Batman team up booster bricks, a case of Batman team up, I guess, and then a notorious booster brick and all of the notorious. It says like will ship out when available because they also prize out um, wheels of vengeance and a different tournament. Right, they do, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the world champion is going to get yeah. Wheels of they vengeance. get like a brick of wheels and it says like that'll like ship as like soon as it's available. Theme Which world championship. Sweet. So this is also Swiss rounds followed by a single elimination bracket. 300 point Silver Age theme team limits 64 players. Prizing for this event will include convention exclusive figures, sealed bricks of product, and more. Uh, $20 entry. Participation gets you an Old Man Logan convention exclusive. I like that a lot. Which, That's cool. Yeah, I won't be able to participate, but like if you want to enter and or just like I'll come find me at worlds. I'll pay your entry. And if you just give me your participation Please. prize, I'll do the same. <laughs> like I've never gotten one of those old man Logans and I'd love to get one for 20 bucks. Uh, top eight, get Batman and Jaro and old man Hawkeye. The finalists get cap on Pegasus and wonder woman generations three pack. And then the champ of theme gets two Marvel hero clicks, X of swords, OP factory sets. I'm assuming that's, that's a typo. That's got to be a typo. Yeah. <laughs> they, two factory, they said 2DC uh, Batman team up bricks. So they either mean two Marvel Hero Eight. Clicks X of Swords bricks or they mean one, one Marvel Hero Clicks X of Swords set. factory yeah. set. If it's two and I'm wrong, then like, holy cow. That's, that's awesome. Drop out of modern so teams and play this. Uh, DC modern or DC Hero Clicks, Notorious Booster Brick, and they get a trophy. And then uh, there's also Onslaught side events. But no, uh, that's that's the prizing. The schedule, just real quick. So obviously yeah. Thursday, September 14th is the opening day, and then it goes until Sunday, September 17th. So 14th to the 17th of September. The first day... We're going to have the pop-up shop opening at 2 p.m. on Thursday with event registration for Heroclix Onslaught, uh, Heroclix and Onslaught beginning at 2 p.m. If it's like last year, you'll be able to register for everything you're doing that weekend at 2 p.m. So potentially be prepared for that if that's what you want to do. At 2.30, Heroclix Battle Royals begin. At 3, uh, the X of Swords storyline event begins. Then 3.30, the Pulp World Championship begins. That's basically it for the day. At 6, the pop-up shop is going to close. At 8.30, the final flight of Heroclix Battle Royals will kick off. And then at 10 p.m., the hall is going to close. And that'll stay closed until Friday at 8.30 when event registration for Heroclix and Onslaught begins. At 9, Heroclix Team World Championship will begin. Uh, At 10 a.m., Heroclix Battle Royals and Onslaught World Championship begins at 2 p.m. Heroclix Team World Championships single elimination begins approximately. So depending on what the cut and how time's going and everything like that, 
that's when they think that the single elimination, aka the top cut, uh, will happen is at 2 p.m. Uh, then the Heroclix theme events and pulp events, the eight person events, kick off at the same time. So if you are eliminated from the top cut, if you don't make top cut for Team Worlds, then you can join one of the theme or pulp events potentially. At 3.30, so an hour and a half later, you can join a different theme event or pulp event. These are eight-person ones. So these are the ones where you win a figure each match, not the ones where it's the 64 player and like you get like a full factory set at the end. Um, at 5.30, final flight of Heroclix Battle Royals begin. At 7 o'clock, WizKids pop-up shop closes. And then at 8 p.m., the WizKids fan appreciation presentation begins which is my favorite part of the weekend because we it's get to see stuff we haven't so seen. So awesome. Last year we saw Spider-Man terrain. Uh, that was when the very terrain. first time we ever heard that we were going to get to just start equipped. We were going to skip the oh, yeah. equipment dance, all that information. So who knows what this year will bring. Uh, Saturday at 8.30 a.m., the pop-up shop opens. By pop-up shop, if you haven't figured it out by now, that's what they call their little like, convention booth where you can buy the convention exclusives. Um, yeah. And you can buy into like event registrations. Uh, so event registration for Heroclix at Onslaught begins at 8.30. At 9, the World Championship begins. So that's going to be a long process of getting everyone verified and stuff. Onslaught World yes. Champion Single Elimination begins. Onslaught Maps and Monsters Battle Royals begins. At 10 a.m., Heroclix Battle Royals begin. At 11... They're kicking off another X of Swords storyline. Uh, at 3 o'clock, Heroclix Theme World Championship begins. So I don't know if this is going to coincide with a top cut, but I doubt it. I feel like you're going to have to play in one or the other. If you feel like you have a better chance in winning the Theme World Championship than singles, maybe you just play some Battle Royals until 3. At 6, the Wiz up, WizKids pop-up shop closes. At 8.30, the final... Battle Royals begin, and then at 10 p.m., the hall is going to close. And then the final day, at 8.30, the shop's going to open. Event registration is going to open, which is basically just Battle Royals at that point. And then the only event really kicking off that day is going to be the Heroclix World Championship top cut at 9 a.m. And then at 10 a.m., you'll have a few Battle Royals and the last Heroclix X of Swords storyline event beginning. Um yeah, it says everything, uh, pricing is all subject to change for all events. Schedule is subject to change without notice at WizKids' sole discretion. Obviously, they've already changed the schedule once because there was some outcry about uh, Team World starting on Thursday, and so that got pushed back to Friday, and so now there's a more open uh, day for something, I guess. I don't know. Like the... Yeah. Because the, the pulp... Oh, the Pulp World Championship is Thursday. Um, yeah, that that World Championship is Thursday, and then I guess the Theme World Championship is Saturday at 3. Yeah, Theme World is th Saturday at 3. Pulp is Thursday at 3. They start kind of late, but it's only a 64-person Swiss thing to top cut, so I guess it's... Who knows how many people will even enter. But that's basically everything for worlds that we know of, right? Uh, well, I guess we can go into the exclusive for sale and the price list that they'll have there. So, okay. A real quick, real quick rundown. Some of these are exclusive to worlds. I forget. I believe it's Generations and Cap. I think everything else is available at some other event this year. But if you're not going to SDCC or Gen Con, I'll just go over everything. So... Batman, 20 bucks. Space Ghost, 20 bucks. Wonder Woman Generations, 30 bucks. Death Metal Wonder Woman, 15 bucks. Punchline, 15 bucks. Harley Quinn, 15 bucks. Batman and Catwoman, 20 bucks. Cap on the Pegasus. This one hurts me a little bit. He's $30. Single dude. Double base. Get it. Really big, really cool sculpt. Really beautiful. 30 bucks. That's toughy. That's toughy. Hawkeye and Hawkeye, 20 bucks. Ashley Barton, $15. Warp World Phoenix, also a peanut base, also has big wings, 20 bucks. Interesting. Just saying, whatever. Never mind. I'm not salty about it. It's okay. It's like cool. It's like, I don't care. <clears throat> Spider Hulk, $15. Fantastic Thors, four people, $50. And then a Phoenix Sentinel is $60. So that is the price list. Get that in your mind and mentally prepare yourself for the money you'll have to drop on your favorite character ever. 
<clears throat> I mean, for you know whoever you want to buy. <clears throat> anyway, well, to be fair, Fantastic Thor's have four people. Wonder Woman <laughs> Generations has three. That yeah, okay. So they're they're a whole Fantastic Thor's is a whole ten dollars more. I guess mm, that's true. well. I mean, it's I just... mm, what would what would that be? Uh, I don't know what that comes out to. It's an extra like two dollars and fifty right. cents per person. Yeah, Something yeah. Like I mean. They would be another ten dollars, yeah. A little three dollars and thirty three cents per per per, <laughs> per, per, per per Fantastic Thor, I guess I guess. So yeah. you know, okay. There, there's another there's another you know the observation to be made there. They, it is a bigger box. A lot more plastic, you know, just saying. But uh yeah, so that is the price list, so be ready for all dats. But I believe that is everything that's worlds. That it was a lot to talk about. It was a lot to go over. That was a crazy, hectic week. Hopefully, yeah. you're not like, man, I hate Dial H for this. But uh, <laughs> if you are, I guess I uh, nothing I can help you with it. But I'm excited for Worlds. I'm excited to go. I'm excited to do the yeah. media coverage. I'm excited to do like, what does the theme World Championship look like? What does the Pulp World Championship look like? These are really cool. Um, and hopefully, you guys are ready for all that content because we're excited to bring it to you. Let's go ahead. We're going to cap off ending the show with some listener questions here. Simeon, if you want to run through the questions we had from Malcolm real quick before we jump into some of our Patreon exclusive Discord questions. Yeah, so Malcolm wrote in. Let me pull it up real quick. He must have been watching Avatar the Last Airbender because he said, let's ask about the four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. Also, weather, weather itself, or the mix of the different elements. Uh, so he wants to know the best and worst powers and abilities that represent each of the elements and weather in Hero Clicks. Uh, you can give a shout out for special powers and abilities, traits that represent each element. Um, I can't really do the worst, so I'm not going to even attempt it because, like, that would. I I don't keep track of like the worst of like an iteration of something in my mind, so. Best for fire, in my opinion, is Human Torch. Uh, Johnny's just always like a good flame fire dude. Um, alchemical fire kind of like affects people with flame markers. There's a few really good fire based kind of people, but I think Johnny, especially like the Nova Burst, like Legacy, uh, is probably like the best fire. Um, water, I'm going to just go with uh, like, gosh the aquaman that like floods the map i think that's probably oh, dude i love one. that aquaman oh my he's so um, cool wasn't there like a black manta or someone that like when they died like you've like rolled a 2d6 and like flooded that many squares or something too there's there's a few atlantean based dudes but that's basically where you're gonna find good water stuff earth i just went with uh rock slide because i don't i honestly geoforce i don't know who's Oh sure, so who's earth based? Like, there's not a uh, magneto. Like, met is metal bending a thing? Is that mm-hmm, count? yeah? That's, that was an earth subset, right? <laughs> it was an avatar. avatar. Yeah. I don't know if it is in like the fifth element or you know Bruce Willis wouldn't got away with it. Toph did. Um, yeah, we'll go with the magneto <laughs> for that, and then air will also go with magneto because he floats now. Um, for air, uh, we'll go with kite man. If he's not, hey, yeah. Black, if he's not I airbending, man, I don't w. know who is. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so yeah, and then as far as weather, I mean, you've got weather wizard, you've got storm, you got a few like weather specific power sets, and I think there's plenty of storms out there. There's not a lot of weather wizards, but there's so many storms to choose from. How you don't just choose like literally the goddess of the weather for that? I mean, Thor is like lightning, but like storm is all the elements of like weather um and then yeah i I basically answered number two with that which is uh which hero clicks character is best representation of the elements um and then which characters are the worst example of the elements uh like magma man is bad example of fire um i can't even say hydro man's like a bad example of like water because he's a good example of like a water person so i guess uh, like uh, ice man's a bad example of water because he's ice instead of well i don't know um we'll do no i i I, honestly i don't i don't remember the bad stuff about hero clicks i try not to so i can't do that one uh and then 
which Heroclix character is my favorite. Bro, of each shout element. out Susan Queen of Atlantis for being the oh, worst yeah. water ever. Best Come on, water, you gotta, gotta fan bender. that flame. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely one of my favorites. Um, like I said, Johnny Storm, I, or, like Human Torch. I always think those are really cool, especially the Nova Burst one. That sculpt specifically, I think, is awesome. Mm, that is um, awesome. As far as rocks go, uh, Earth goes the the hulk smashing the ground and like little rocks mm. flying around yeah let's go with that one and then as far as air goes uh we'll we'll give it to bubble magneto the old magneto in a big bubble okay that was a thing right okay okay i mean you can't have bubbles that air so <laughs> yeah that's, that's just uh, true and then yeah that's my hero clicks team that i made with those characters um yeah the specific ones a lot of them are legacy cards but and then the last question, rank from best to worst uh, from best to worst of the four elements in Heroclix uh, world and try to include them on your team building and why. So best, I think, has to be fire. Uh, and in a game like Heroclix where you're attacking and you're dealing damage, I think fire usually represents like some sort of like penetrating or consistent damage or poison or something like that. So I think that's usually the best. Water in the last couple years represents more of like a kind of like stealthier like stay back usually like a tk kind of thing goes along with that um maybe that's just like my opinion but like i think that's so fire's number one i think water is like a good support thing but it's not like the attacking thing uh earth would be like the better defense the few earth-based kind of powers like put this guy like absorbing man or whatever put this guy next to a certain type of terrain and like they can copy it they usually have like really good defenses, but um, not necessarily like great attackers on their own. So I'm going to put Earth in number two, Water in number three, and then Air just because I can't think of a ton of air-based powers that's going to number four. And like granted, like TK and stuff would be like a air-based, but like I can't think of people whose like power set is like I control air because that'd be pretty powerful. Uh, Graviton doesn't even control air. He controls gravity. And then uh, weather, mm. yeah. Uh, weather would be, like, top tier if you let, like, Thor and Storm just, like, mess with that stuff because they always have good figures. There's a lot of good Thors and Storms out there. But, yeah, that's... Right. Uh, Fair enough. What do you think, Calder? What's your favorite element? You like when favorite the Fire element. Nation attacked? Is that what you're saying? And you're like, oh, so yeah, Fire I, Nation, please you, attack. Take you know, those crazy. Nomads. My my favorite character, yikes, that's definitely not me ever. If you you saying I want the invading nation to take out a tribe of nomads, that's <laughs> yikes. Yikes. Uh jeez. No, my my favorite was just I always liked Sokka. I always and I in the Korra oh, yeah. seasons, the I, I like the dudes with no powers. Bender. Yeah. Yeah, I like boomerang bending. I like meteor sword guy. He was I mean you know, that's like the kind of the why I like Captain America, why I like a lot of other certain characters. It's like it's cool that he is holding his own and taking on vendors and beating them when all he has is like no special abilities, nothing. But he's got like hard work, determination and, you know, smarts, brains, cleverness, like stuff like that. So like that's that's my that's my favorite bit in the whole. That's a non answer. But it's it's cool. That's like that's why Sokka is cool. That's why Jet is like an interesting character, you know, things like that, where it's like, wow, they're able to do all of this and they don't have like the cheat code of this world. They are. Yeah. That's like why the how, Earth ponies are the best ponies in My Little Pony. Just saying how everyone like, because... in uh, attack on Titan that doesn't turn into a Titan is infinitely cooler because they have to be good at yeah. like fighting giants instead yeah. of just like, oh, I have this thing where I turn into one. It's it's why Asta is interesting in Black Clover because he's born without magic. He kind of just gets like a suit. Here's a cool anti magic sword. He kind of gets a cheat code, but like he's born without it, so he has to like work hard and train and do all these things, you know, because he doesn't get that. Everybody just instantly. I'm not even better than me, but literally everybody is normal, and I'm just worse off. Uh, so it's like, yeah, I, I always dug characters like that. So I'm not, you know, yeah, big Encanto fan over here. Yeah, I mean, 
That I movie slap. <laughs> I still that haven't movie. seen that movie. You haven't seen it? No. It was wild is in the time that Simeon hasn't seen that movie, I've seen it like three times, maybe four, and I'm forgetting, but I've definitely seen it three times. And uh, some of those were against my will. And by that, I mean twice it was against my <laughs> my will to watch Encanto again and then again. But uh, the What's song sad is good. I've heard the whole soundtrack three times. I believe you have. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. It's I, I actually enjoy the soundtrack quite a lot and by enjoy the soundtrack i mean i like under pressure and i like uh, yeah you know, talk about bruno and that's it yeah um, those those are the two i've listened the, to multiple times and the other songs i kind of forget how they go uh we're the family madrigal or whatever but we have we have some patreon exclusive questions they're on our discord if you want to join our discord it's five bucks a month on our patreon that gives you access to things like videos that are not public on our youtube channel behind the scenes videos uh outtake videos skits and videos that are literally specifically made just for people that support us on patreon you get all of that plus our discord plus we play things like bad sam there are all sorts of fun cool things like discord chats and hangouts with simeon and i with ian like all this cool stuff for just being a five dollar patron on our discord and you can donate Less than that, if you want to, you just want to be like, here, toss this buck our way, but you won't be getting uh, into Discord. Sorry about that. And if you donate more, you get even more stuff. So, like, these are a lot of non physical goods that you get if you support us at five bucks, but they're still cool. It's like content. Like, right now, we're giving you a non physical good. So, it's like this is like extra content you get for joining our Discord. But if you go above the five bucks, you'll get like action tokens, t shirts, all sorts of stuff. We have different tiers. Um, and it's a lot of fun. We have really cool, fun tokens. We recently made some pretty neat Dr. Octopus arms for that listener dressed up as Doc Ock and did. We have the fragment tokens for Absorbing Man. We have pretty fun tentacles, clue tokens, Scooby Snacks, and an evil pizza oven. So we have some cool stuff. We'll probably make some grave markers and maybe even some, some custom Dial H objects, like the new standard black object tokens. But we'll see. Anyways... Patreon exclusive questions. Luke, Luke, Luke asks, well, folks, it's con season. Time to theorize some crazy hypotheticals. PAX, Comic-Con, Gen Con, Worlds. That's sort of, oh, never mind. Wait, never mind. Mystery cards back. What's, who cares about con questions? Mystery cards. What team could really benefit from their own mystery card, and what could it do? For example, X-Factor, perhaps. Because, you know, Jamie Madrix is a detective -y guy, I guess. Or what about Defenders, huh? The Netflix ones are pretty detective-y. Could She-Hulk... A detective of sorts have a case closed mystery card detective chimp talk about it so i didn't go for a team specifically but howard the duck has basically been a duck detective Ooh. most yeah. recently uh is basically a detective a duck detective if you would uh and he's been cracking some cases here in his most recent couple of runs some marvel quacking some yeah there it is <laughs> there you go so i what i have written down I, I had, like, maybe if he used, like, prob to, you know, on an attack roll and it changes, like, a little Awatu action, that's how you get a clue token If every time you prob and it's either a hit or a miss instead of a miss or a hit, and etc. And then maybe by the end, this is kind of inspired from the old Howard the Duck, where he said, well, if I'm wrong, everyone's wrong, or whatever, where he can choose a power that a friendly character can use and no one can use it. Um, I always loved that ability for Howard. So I would just say that once you get up to like the eight or nine clue tokens, that's what he has where you choose a power and just no one can use it friendly or opposing within like six squares or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. I think it'd be a fun Howard the Duck mystery card. I couldn't remember any specific cases or mysteries he solves besides the one where he has to go save a cat for Aunt May. Um, and I don't know what that would look like, uh, honestly, except for maybe making most foul. Yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, making so he. I don't know. He solves a few cases. One is with She Hulk, and I kind of forget what they all are. Um, but I know he goes and saves a cat for Aunt May, and maybe that makes a cat bystander at the end or something. Uh, but that's kind of funny. But I don't know. So, I mean, what do you think about future mystery cards? I hope they keep making them. But yeah, what do you think? Uh, so, I I think it's a really fun and inventive way to add something to a character that might not like do enough on their own to be interesting or just like I mean doesn't really add anything to most characters outside of like the Riddler that we saw where he forces the opponent to have one but like we saw Spider-Man Noir the newest one 
comes with one specifically, the mystery of the cube or whatever. That is really fun. Uh, and I think that's really fun. And I think that since you get it specifically with him, there's just like no reason to never play him without it. It doesn't really, it takes up a sideline slot, but it doesn't like take up like anything major from your team. And I think it's a really fun thing to work towards. This might be like more mission point kind of based of me than anything else. So I designed one here and I think it's fun. But it kind of just like once you get to the case closed, you just win the game. So it's like you have to get a decent amount. And so I called mine the man on the wall or just man on the wall. So, yeah, this is a shield theme team. (laughs) Like you have to no detectives allowed. This is shield specifically Uh, when a character with the listed keyword increases range or targets more than one opposing character and hits gain a clue token. So if they increase their range and hit or if they have more than one target and they hit, they get a clue token. Uh, the suspect is, the I put it at five, but like that doesn't really have like any meaning. Um, sure. These are like, the last one's the one that's going to be like the crazy one. Uh, so if an opposing character, suspect is if an opposing character has taken damage this turn, when an opposing character would take damage, the damage dealt is penetrating instead. So mm-hmm. this is like, once you get up to five, which... Granted, I I think this would be fairly easy if you have like four people with leadership and you're running a shield team. Um, you're probably going to be able to get two or three each turn, I guess. So then after the first character that you hit each turn, everyone else is taking penetrating damage. Uh, the evidence, I put it at eight. Again, that doesn't matter. Uh, it probably should be higher. Opposing characters can't use improved targeting hindering. This is kind of late to the game for boosting like your stealth characters, but I just, I just thought it was fun. This could be swapped sure. with suspect effect too. Uh, right. And then case closed. Because if you've read the man on the wall kind of storylines, um, you know, Nick Fury killed a living planet with a big gun. Uh, that's, that's what... So cool. Yeah, I'll, if anyone that like doesn't didn't read like that like far into uh, gosh, what was that storyline called? Or, origin, original sin? original sin, original yeah. sin, yeah, yeah, original yeah. sin. Anyone that didn't read that storyline or didn't read far enough into that storyline is just like, oh yeah, it's Nick Fury after he killed the Watcher. Like, no, 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 he killed a lot of stuff. He was killing some like big heavy hitters that like the Avengers right. just never heard about because he killed them before they ever got into like the galaxy, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and then he sends um, Bucky winter soldier off to like basically take his place. Cause he's too old. Uh, so my case closed, uh, add some sort of arbitrary number to this, like 30 or something. The first time a friendly character hits an opposing character each turn, KO that opposing character. So you, you just auto K start like this is like you, Nick brought out like the the big gun with like the gamma bullets or whatever and he's just blowing holes through like demigods at this point. Um oh, it dang. takes like the whole game to get here, but like just like mission points, if you get here then like the game's basically over and you just win. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're just killing. I think that'd be people. hilarious. Um It'd be something that'd be fun to like try and do, see how many, how many, uh, whatever tokens you could rack up in a turn or something. But mm, yeah, yeah, I thought, uh, it's not really a case so much as it is just like a, an effect that makes sense for a team of spies, I guess. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. But yeah, so pretty fun. Mystery cards. Cool. Keep them. Keep them coming. I think it's funny that Luke says mystery cards are back. We just had one set without them is all. Uh, Avengers 60, this just didn't have any. And then we go right back into Batman having a couple. So I'm pretty, I am pumped. I'm pumped for mystery cards. I hope they keep making them. I hope they keep doing them. Alex Dean Chainer asks, now that Iconics is open to non-Marvel DC, what would you like to see? We kind of answered this earlier in the episode. We we went off on some, some rambly tangents and whatnot so i don't i don't think we i don't yeah. think we need to necessarily answer it now a lot of people have said godzilla and now. i the only thing i'll say is like as soon as i saw people say yeah. that i typed in neca godzilla and neca has made godzilla figures so it's not outside of the realm of possibility that hero clicks could get it i think that's their whiz kids right. like you know they're a, a neca is a parent company of whiz kids so i think that that's possible i don't know what year those were made but Maybe. 
Maybe. Hey, with Oppenheimer coming out, like Maybe. Godzilla's got to be getting pretty popular I... again, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jeez. I honestly, I know this is like Marvel. If we just go into that and we don't even say the stuff that's like, oh, everybody could have rights to this, then honestly, it is like the stuff NECA has rights to. Please, please make it. Again, I've said it a million times. I would kill, 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 kill for a Evil Dead set, Army of Darkness, Ash versus Evil Dead, all that stuff. Please, I'm begging you. Please, I am begging you to do that because it would be, gosh. Come on, man. You know it would be so awesome. It would be so great. Uh, so, yeah, please make, like, Evil Dead. But NECA also has, you know, we already did Ninja Turtles. They have the rights to Ninja Turtles. So if you want new Turtles stuff, maybe more Turtles can be back into it. I mean, we NECA did Transformers has the right and to... uh, My Little Pony years ago. Like, WizKids Gosh, actually I... had, like, those. Yeah, but Hasbro has got to be stinky about, like, board game stuff yeah. since they are a board game company, right? Like, that's not going to... Probably not. No way. So some stuff like that. NECA also has the rights to geez, what else have they like used? Universal monster stuff. That would be kind of cool. They have Alien, they have Predator. Those are pretty popular lines. Yeah, you know, NECA's uh there's a lot of cool there's a lot of cool stuff NECA owns. And WizKids is like a child. A, a child company of NECA, whatever. Uh, NECA's NECA's the parent company of WizKids, whatever it's technically. So yeah. I don't know. That's the stuff I want. I want I want it so bad. So bad. But we'll see what happens. Simeon, you already shot it out there. Let's go ahead. Jump on in to the next person here. Bill, two questions. It's expressively prohibited to cosplay as Elvis at Graceland. But what if I paint one of my figures as Elvis? Will I be thrown out of worlds? Question two. Uh, now, let's first let's answer this. No, I don't think so. I think you can I, paint your figures as well. I so, don't know why anyone would literally ever have a problem with that, I guess. In 2019, the first year that it, we were in Memphis at Graceland, I was talking to... Uh, Calder was there, too. We were talking to a guy named Brian that was in... Uh, there you go. That was working for WizKids, and he was just kind of doing like this little, like, little meet and greet, like, shooting shop with us and stuff. Like, I found out that he had designed, like, Mage Knight Resurrection and, like, some other cool sets and different or worked with those sets like helped bring them into the game or whatever and we we did bring up something about elvis i remember him saying uh essentially like because elvis still has family that's alive at graceland or alive that like visits graceland they essentially don't want anything like that's that would be disparaging to elvis and oh, like dressing like him or quote unquote like you know copying his like speaking style or like his songs or like whatever i don't know uh, yeah. doing that kind of stuff on like graceland property could be seen as like disparaging and so it's just like safer not to just because you know don't want to offend like his only like living relatives he's kind of a big deal i don't know That's elvis fair, actually. Um, yeah. so yeah i think painting would be fine as long as you weren't doing it like in a uh, somehow a malicious way and don't ask me how you would paint elvis maliciously but i don't know like you you might be able to so uh, yeah i don't think you'd be thrown out of worlds unless you were doing something to disparage the king as far as like painting a figure goes and then which figure would make the best elvis probably guardians of the galaxy uh beyonder he's already got the popped collar the white suit so yeah. he got like the the hands out like you know black hair we could use the new but you could use the new beyonder yeah but he doesn't have like the not big, quite but the big could. effect behind him he doesn't have that's the star true. power that's true that is true uh for modern i don't know if there's any deep cuts maybe namor you could paint to be elvis i kind of forget what his deep cuts sculpt looks like but uh i, I think an elvis would have been thing from, would be really from, funny like, genesis is that where that deep cuts from or yeah it's from genesis that? i don't know he was in. He was in it. Yeah, Regenesis yeah. was in it. Uh, I think a, uh, I think Thing or Colossus would be really funny. Elvis, because they'd it. be they'd be easy to paint, you know, for their deep cuts. That'd be kind of fun. But yeah, uh, Wonder Man would probably be like an all. Well, maybe not. He's not posed quite right. No, no. I don't know. There's there's got to be like enough people with like tuxedo kind of like styles on. Maybe uh, President Loki, if you do like a head swap, there's there's options out there, and I mean you'll get a, you'll get away with it as long as you do. 
That's all, all I can say. I can't right. promise that you'll make it through the whole weekend, but you'll you'll get away with it as long as you will. Yeah, so we'll <laughs> we'll see. But there you go. You know, Silver H, maybe try to play some Rockabilly Modox. Ooh, get some bystanders printed off for uh, for Silver Age. You know, that's what I'd maybe go for that. Yeah, free, free some, fun. some rockabilly. Get the uh, play Rama Tut instead of um. Oh, um, Bubba Hotep. Bubba Hotep. Yeah. 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 Paint paint Rama Tut to look like Bubba Hotep. There you go. Oh man, that you can recreate that movie. So funny. He's a he's a Bubba Hotep. That's gosh, that's so funny. That would be. That movie is not a good movie, but is it everything <laughs> you think it will be when you hear the premise? Yeah, it is. Um, it's so fun. Oh, gosh. Another, hey, I would love to get Bubba Hotep in Hero Clicks. He did a crossover comic with Army of Darkness they made a few years ago. I remember buying all of those, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, and it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Now you actually before you before you even go to Worlds because like Worlds is like season five Hero Clicks. You're still if you're still in season one for Elvis lore, you got a lot to go before you can go to Graceland. And Bubba Hotep is somewhere around season uh, season three, I think. So you got a lot of watching to catch up on before you're even allowed to get inside Graceland. You got yeah a lot of reading to do, man. I'm just checking out a post real so, quick. Uh, oh, San Diego Comic Con isn't the only place where you can get Mermaid, Batman, the Hawkeyes, and Space Ghost. So oh, fun. Where else? I think they also. I mean, they're all in Denton as well. If you happen to be no, like right now, right now, oh, if you whoa. happen to be at the Singapore Nationals, they oh have really? A, yeah, that's that's part of their prizing and stuff. Oh, that's uh, so, cool. Yeah, Edison's running stuff down in Singapore. If you uh, get on a flight uh, right now, you'll be there in time for it to be over. <laughs> go go go, uh, man. Just run up to the airport line and you're just like one ticket to Singapore right and they're like, what city? I don't know. Uh the the one that this is at. They're like, yeah. what? No, that's super cool. Is- if you want to pick up some of these convention exclusive, you well, we're not gonna get into that whole topic of like whether people can upcharge for visiting conventions or not. Uh but what I will say is some of these convention exclusives that we've talked about as prizing are available on CoolStuffInc.com. They're part of the old part of the Hero Clicks that they have that are new and old. So you can check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 to save 5% off. And if you want to get some new stuff and maybe a brick incentive or two, you can check out Shop.WizKids.com where you're using code Dial H10 will save you 10% off. And yeah, they've got some of these convention exclusives pop up as... Uh, like case and brick incentives when you buy Marvel and DC stuff. So keep an eye out and maybe you'll see one that piques your interest and you need to pick up. But yeah, use use those codes. Save the money. It's not for us. It's for you. That's right. And like always, guys, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over okay, six yeah. people think I 